everybody loved him. Hundreds of people would be by the courthouse. And he, you know, put up his finger to the government and that's it. This man is dying and you still have him in solitary confinement. He was tied, his feet to the bed and his hands were tied to the bed. People want to question if my father was weak or tough. He had a severe kidney infection. He was sick. He didn't get to see a doctor. By the time he got off the bus, he was covered in blood. If there was ever a time to become a rat or something, it would have been then. No, instead he fought five trials. Eli has never had any conversation with my father. You lie about my son. Like, this is how sick they are. I defend my family. I think I do a pretty good job of defending my family. But other people defend my family also. I don't ask them to do it, but they do. Oh, hi, everybody. <clears throat> Let me just get this picture off. Hold on. I'm sorry. I was texting with my daughter. How is everyone tonight? Just, okay, maybe his room will pop up. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I had last minute change of uh, plans over here. How is everybody tonight? Let me say hello. Uh, I changed that. Listen, I can do, stop doing them earlier because it gets uh, darker earlier. My problem is that um, I always uh, need to get out there before it gets dark because I uh, put the lights in the cat's cage and then I feed him. So, and then I feed the cat in the front. So now it's starting to get uh, light, uh, darker earlier. I can start coming on earlier, except for I had so much going on today. Okay, very good. So I had so much going on today and I was uh, like a chicken without a head. So I changed the time and then I was late and I'm sorry. And now I was planning on doing one thing and and now I'm going to do one thing and another thing. So my plan is for now is to have MRE come on. I don't know if he's here yet. And then I want, um, I asked my friends to come on. And so uh, I would have on Angela and Teresa. But give me one second. Uh, he's okay. So, okay. So that's my plan for right now. Everything always changes, but let me say hello to everyone. Oh, that's early. Uh, much earlier. Let me see. Hi, Nitro. Hi, Cremel. Hi, Maddie. Hello, Teresa. Um, after I'm done, Teresa, with, um, with what I'm, I'm going to do in the beginning, I hope you and Angela will still come on. Angela won't be here until nine o'clock anyway. So um, that should be enough time. Hi, Cremel. Hello, Carol. And Carol, you're more than welcome as well. Uh, hi, hi, Joe Zabata. How are you? Uh, hello, Mary. Hello, Callie G's. How are you, Callie G's? Hello, Jane Perry. Hello, Gianni. Hi, Yankees for Life. Um, I swore I wasn't going to say um anymore. Hi, Tina Orlando, Jane. And uh, Joe, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't wait to uh to uh these kittens can leave their mother because I think my uh the little man that I have out there is gonna be very happy to get uh one or two new friends so he's not alone. But thank you so much, Joe, for the cats. Thank you. 
and everybody, if you didn't see my short, you see that I'm not lying when it, when I say, uh, it's like a car payment just for the, the animals. No, come here. Just for the animals every month. Okay. Let me see. Hi, Del Strain. Hi, David. Hello, Dan Perry. Hello, Charles Murphy. How are you? Hey, A-I-L-O. And Ron Gross, how are you? Hello, Chicago Muscle. How are you, Chicago Muscle? Hi, Paul Clinton. Hi, Minnie the Moocha. Hi, Montauk. Hi, Claudio. Oh, I forgot to even text Marla and ask Marla if she wanted to come on. Hi, John Martin. Hi, Cleveland, Corleones. Hi, Tales from the Snitch. Del Strain, I said hello to you, right? And hello, Red Reaper. Okay, let's see. My vape. And hello, Nunzio. How are you, Nunzio? Hi, Assassinino. How are you, Assassinino? Hi, Zio. How are you, Zio? <laughs> Hello, Mike Wall. I'm good, uh, Zio Lesso. Thank you. I hope you are too. But I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, let's see. I think I have everyone. Right? I think I got everyone. Oh, hi, Ken. Hello to my little Chucky. Thank you, Callie G's. Thank you so much. And you too. God bless you and your family. Okay. Just give me one second. I'm going to drop the link. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, hi, Frankie Calabria. I thought you were MRE. How are you? Hi, Rara. Okay, I think Emory is here. Hello, Mandy, Mandy. And let's see, Frankie Calabria, how are you, Frank? Oh, yeah, there he is. I gotcha. And... Okay, we're just waiting for uh, MRE to come on. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Hello, DJ and NM. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, hello. 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 I haven't seen you. This, hear me? Uh, Yes, I haven't seen this outfit in a long time. Oh yeah, this is called my uh, my Italiano skull face. Uh, it was by made by Gucci and uh, uh, actually designed by Johnny Versace many years ago. <laughs> uh, that's that's just me being me, folks. Uh, yes. No, I wanted to uh, come on and uh, I just like uh, all right. Remember my buddy Scott who came on? Yes, the one okay. from Oklahoma. Well, from Rhode Island, but lives there now. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, he hit me oh, up that's today. what I meant. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, he hit me up today and he said that I'm a, one of our friends, Chris, his brother, started a YouTube channel about three months ago. And he's not, you know, this guy did 36 years in prison. Really good guy. He was good friends of my uncle. Uh, good. Uh, all that stuff. So I found that out, and he's not so he's not good with technology and all that stuff. So he didn't know where. I guess he was having trouble promoting his channel and stuff. So once Scotty told me about it, 
I automatically did a uh, shared it on my community tab and did a stream for it. And I was going to ask people to sub about it. Uh, he started writing uh, 12, uh, he did 36 years in prison 12 years ago. He started writing books, fiction books, you know. Uh, he might do an autobiography one day, but it's all fiction books, you know. He doesn't, he's not like the, these, these, and he's no fan, he's a stand up guy, good guy. And uh, so I wanted to uh, share his channel and help him out. You know, because uh, us Providence guys, especially, you know, his brother was a good friend of mine. You know, even though I only known him for a year because he was in jail my whole life. He got out in 99 and we hung out a lot. He was a real good person. Uh, sadly, he was uh, uh, convicted of murder, which he did not do. Uh, and he's in prison right now. But his brother, Dean, I never met because he was always in the uh, can when I was a kid and growing up. So. Uh, when I found out his brother had a channel, I just wanted to, uh, to reach out and help someone from our neighborhood and stuff like that, uh, buddies. So I'm going to share it in the chat. If people could sub, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, even if you don't like me, you don't have to. This guy's a likable guy. You'll hear if you're into cool stories and stories about prison and all that. He writes books. He's got a book. Uh, man, I forget the name of it. I hope he pops in the chat or his wife does. He don't know how to use YouTube, you know? But his wife just popped in my live stream. Oh, okay. I I saw uh, your I saw a post this morning by you, so I went and I subbed early this morning. But oh, thank I, you. Yeah, I I didn't get to. I watched one video of his, and I didn't get to watch any others. I didn't. Uh, I was so crazy today, so busy that I didn't get a chance to. And I even saw that Dominic uh, Justice Tech Bros dropped another episode that I didn't a very even good one. Oh man. See, I didn't get to, I didn't get to see that either. Well, I'm three quarters. Of, oh, sorry to cut you off. I'm three quarters. That's all right. Go ahead. Why? I was three quarters away in and I had to stop watching it because, uh, I came on here. I'll finish the rest later, but I was three quarters away in and it was good. Oh, uh, thank okay. you for subbing. Thank sorry, you everybody. Yeah, Assassinino dropped the link. I see Cuban. Oh no, Gianni dropped the link, and uh, oh, you dropped it, right? I yeah, see yeah, you. I dropped it. Too. Thank yeah. you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. that. It's not for um, me. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just saying, uh, Cleveland. This Colonial. isn't the interruption show. Starting I the know. Interrupters. We should do look it at all. everybody who subbed. They all subbed, so that's nice. I wanted to share it. Yeah, yeah, you can share the channel if you'd like, and uh, even if you want to play a video from it or something. Uh, yeah, we should, uh, right? Yeah. But which yeah, one should? We, all right, which um, one should we play? If you because I know you played one on your uh, your stream tonight. Yeah, if you pull up the channel, and let me look. I'll tell you one that's a good okay, one. Okay, it's, it's a little me... down more. I, one of his first videos three months ago. Okay, let me. Uh... Let me go find it. Hold him on. and my uh, him and my uncle were really close in jail because he went in in eighty three. My uncle was uh, him and Raymond were convicted of a nineteen sixty six murder that they didn't do it had nothing to do with it. Uh, they were convicted in eighty four and they went away in eighty four. Uh, so that they they met in prison and he became a good buddy with my uncle in prison. Okay, so he uh, when I when I checked his video this morning. He only had, I think, 60 subscribers. No, 67. Yes. Right. Well, I'm sorry. He's got 160 now. Oh, awesome. That's great. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah See, because... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Again, yeah. I interrupted you. No, it's me too. It's the interruption game. Uh, no, uh, uh, he's not tech savvy. He doesn't know this. You know, this. he doesn't know uh, YouTube that well. And I guess his wife's learning. I don't know her how much she knows YouTube. So I do appreciate you letting me come on here. I want to thank you for letting oh, me. Oh, I volunteered. I I asked you in your chat if he wanted to come on as well, even either any time if he wants to come on and uh and let us talk to him. I would love that. You know, I love every time I have somebody that you know from your past well, come on. I love it. Well, here's the thing. I never met Dean. Dean was always in, like you, know, like I said, he went away in '83. Right. I was about three years old. I never met Dean. Oh, I, knew, you never I was met friends. Him. No, I was friends with his brother Chris. Me and Chris were close when he was okay. out. For, yeah. And then, okay. matter of fact, the only time I ever did get in trouble in my life when they raided my grandmother's house, 
and I went to jail for like, I don't know, three, four weeks, maybe almost a month. I uh, was in there with Chris, you know, he was in, he was in intake, but he wasn't in the same mod as me. I was in a G mod and I think he was in F, I'm not sure, but, but we got to talk at Chow and stuff like that. So it was good to see him. Again. Oh, all right. Very good. But so I never met Dean and Dean don't know me. I, I never met him. Like I said, oh, I okay. his brother and he was friends with my uncle. Oh, okay, okay. And my friends, Scott. If it wasn't for Scotty, I wouldn't have known about it. Scotty's the one who told me. Oh, what happened to Scotty? Scotty was supposed to come on here. Uh, he probably, yeah, uh, uh, he probably had something with his arm or something. Yeah, I know he does no, want that's it. right, that's right. He was supposed to come on uh, to play uh, Jeopardy. Oh yes, he wants to do that. Yeah, he wants to do that. Uh, yeah. Maybe something got in the way. Who knows? Last month, uh, Kane Shades. If you can hit on his thing, and thank you, Kane Shades. Yeah, it just did. It's in front of you, Mari. No, it's Assassinino. No, right now it's Kane Shades. Oh, I'm I'm looking on uh, the other. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. on YouTube because I'm sharing the channel. That's why. Yeah, and it's a, a like a bit of a delay when you do that. Oh, All okay. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. I'll up. share it. Let me do this, and then you tell me which video to play, okay? Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, the right side up. Yeah, that's his name of his channel. Yes. The right okay. side up. So, which video should we uh, play? Go down to uh, go down a little more. Like you take Kane Shades thing off there. I see that one right there. Yeah, I'll, wait. There's let me take story. Kane Shades comment off first. Hold There's on. There's one from three months ago called Prison Stories mob uh and back uh you see it it's in the second column second to the left Pris and this one right here down. no on the other side where he's sitting down right here yes that one this i one. didn't watch it yet yeah i didn't watch it yet okay so let's play this one and wait the writer and me can't sleep I was working at the keyboard a little while ago, but uh, I got a story to tell, and I feel like telling it, but I'm outside in my car in the fucking rain at one in the morning. Um, I think I, you picked the wrong one. I, I told you. Next car, and did a lot of time. Okay, which one? It, it was the one a little down from that. Oh, wait, I stopped sharing like an idiot. Hold well, on. Well, that's good, because uh, I wanted to see the other one. That was the wrong one. Oh, okay. Hold on. But yeah, people, uh, and if you want to, like, uh, this guy's probably going to have a lot of cool stories about prison in the 80s where the ACI was very violent in Rhode Island. I'm talking very violent. Like, uh, the inmates uh, ran the whole joint. Oh, no, okay. that's it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. Keep, uh, I can't just, yeah, that's a good one that we Which had. Which right one? There. The one we were listening to? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> so this one, prison stories where he's yeah. sitting in the car. Yeah, Mr. Indecisive okay. over here. Okay. This is Dean Wilkinson. It's fucking late. The writer and me can't sleep. I was working at the keyboard a little while ago, but uh, he became a writer twelve years ago in prison. I got a story to tell, and I feel like telling it, but I'm outside in my car in the fucking rain at one in the morning. Um, uh, the life of an ex-con who did a lot of time is what this is. Sleeping is not a fucking luxury for me sometimes, and the writer in me on top of that is a fucking added bonus. <laughs> but uh. You know, I've had requests for prison stories, and I got a handful of them. I'll tell you, good ones, but I have a hard time uh, tapping into them and why I don't know. I, I don't want it to be a braggadocio thing and shit like that. He's very humble. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I is. can tell you. I figured I'd tell you about my first uh, altercation in prison. If you don't know it by now, I went in at 16 into the prison system, and... Uh, maximum security this was the early 80s it was a different fucking beast altogether at that time very dangerous and, uh, it was a violent violent place you know and it, you know as all prisons all maximum securities especially my in, uncle ran that era across the country you know everyone's got similar stories 
uh, mine is that of a, of a kid uh, coming into his own. I hate to put it that way, but it's a fucking, and that's exactly what it is when you're a teenager growing up in fucking prison. But it's coming into your own in a fucking different fucking nature, different way. Uh, you know, and of course, uh, at that age and at that size, I was about a buck 20. Um, you know, one or two things happens. Ultimately, you become a fucking victim, you succumb to the environment, or you fucking get crafty with a fucking knife. In this case, uh, it wasn't a knife, but uh, I eventually graduated to knives because I learned that hitting guys in the head with fucking weapons doesn't necessarily get the fucking job done. <laughs> in any event, uh, just to show you the simplicity of how things can... Uh, it's really the psychology behind predators in the prison system, the type of shit they do, how you're tested. Many, many ways. One way is how this... Uh, uh, this is older black guy. He was older than me. He was probably about mid 40. He was probably around 40 ish. 40 ish. Muscle bound, two and a quarter, I'd say, if I had to pick a number. He looked a lot tougher than he was. He was all scarred up, probably from all the fucking beatings he took over the years for being a fucking bully and a predator. But um, uh, I was working in a print shop. This was 1984. I'd already been involved in a couple of acts of violence along the way, but this one stands out because this was a predator trying to make his fucking move. Uh, and now what he's talking about is the ACI, and like I told you, in the early, in the 80s, when he went in, 83, 84, this was a gladiator school, literally, ran by, like, wise guys, and, like, and then the blacks would have their leader and uh, stuff like that. It was a very dangerous place in there. And that's nuts. Uh, going in at 19 years old, young kid like that, uh, that's pretty crazy. But, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody the background. What the ACI is is the Adult Correction Institution in Rhode Island. So if you get right. in trouble in Rhode Island and do state time, that's where you go. And he was only 16, right? Well, he was in Juvie Hall. And then uh, uh, from what I got from his videos and stuff, uh, he was in Juvie Hall first. And then he got locked up in 83. Uh, his wife even came in the chat and said it. He got locked up in '83, uh, and he does. He's got a book too, and uh, it's a pretty cool book. Yeah, let's listen to some more. It's, this has an interesting story right here. Okay. In the way that predators do, um, it was as simple as me uh, using his milk. See, in the, uh, they had an office area. Uh, it's like a break room, so to speak, for the fucking cons and. Uh, I made a coffee. There's always coffee up and running. Cigarettes and coffee are a staple of the prison system of uh, the country, <laughs> especially then. Um, I used to get, I used this fucking guy's milk. And, uh, and of course, he puts on the fucking mean dog, the mad dog fucking face. You use my fucking milk? I didn't tell you you can use my fucking milk. What do you think you're doing? I already knew the fucking play because I was I was in a fucking training school. I'd been in prison a little while. I'd been up against it already, and I knew where this motherfucker was headed. I, you know, but I wasn't strapped, meaning I didn't have a weapon on me. Of course, at my size, this guy outweighed me. He was, I'm sure he could hold his own to some extent. He, he, you know, he had a little bit on me at the time, and uh, I ain't no fucking idiot. I'm not gonna let you get get me down and punch my fucking lights out. But I did say fuck you. Well, we'll handle this later in the blind spot, I said. That's your way of saying I'll meet you out of view of the fucking, uh, the screw, which is now they call COs. And, uh, he mushed me. What that means is he put his fucking hand in my face and shoved me. People seen it, other cons seen it. Even if they didn't see it, this is something that can't be allowed. This is the first step towards, if you don't do anything, this guy steps his fucking game up. Next, he comes at you at a different angle. Next thing you know, you're a fucking victim of some ugly fucking things, and you get my fucking drift, I'm sure. And uh, uh, my initial fucking move was to fucking stab him right there, you know, in, on the spot. In which, uh, eventually, that is the way I started responding to things. But I was concerned with trying to get away with it. I wasn't in a danger. I wasn't a necessarily immediate threat. I figured, let me try to get away with it and be fucking sneaky here. Yeah? Because you could. You could stab a guy and get away with it in those days. 
There's no cameras, a lot less informants around watching. And uh, uh, he lived in a cell next to me, too, in the cell block. And uh, the next morning, uh, Saturday morning, no, it was uh, just before work. And uh, I crept into a cell. I got the fucking shank out. Or shiv is really what it is. Um, a shank is what you do with a shiv. And that's another misnomer, but that's another story. Um, the seal or hat caught the fucking move on this fucking uh, to a mirror that's rounded. He caught the fucking play on the second tier. He yells up to me, Dean, you ain't doing that in my block. Knock it off. I could have did it. I could have went through with it and not gave a fuck. If I was under immediate threat, I would have and I wouldn't have gave a fuck. But as it was, the guy was a decent guy and his fucking clown was sleeping. Has no idea I was in this fucking cell with this shank. And uh, I was a young kid out to prove himself. You know, I had to make a move. I had to do something. People would be talking about it. That shit type that the fucking prison's worse than a fucking hair salon. The word spreads fast immediately. And not only this fucking predator, other, other predators that hear this fucking story. All the bullshit starts. Hey, man, I get your bed. I get your fuck you. I don't no fucking help. Get the fuck out of here. And guys, good guys will back your play, but they first initially have to see how you handle it yourself. Then I got to back a coward who two weeks later is somebody's fucking bitch. Now, they look bad. It's just not good. So, and I didn't want to help any fucking way. I wanted to make the point. I know to do this. Watch this. But I didn't get the shank on that morning. We go to work. And uh, I wasn't going to let the fucking day end without retaliating. I had to retaliate. Meanwhile, this clown probably thinks, you know, he probably got some fucked up thoughts in his head about what he's going to do, his next play, and ultimately how it's going to end in his fucking mind. Not going to happen. <laughs> I was all thinking of already, and uh, I, uh, I worked a big press machine, uh, and it had this big Heidelberg press. He used to do these envelopes. He grabs the envelope, stamps it, fucking puts like a state seal on it, and uh, I re whenever I could, no one can see me. I take another screw off this fucking handle, about three foot long cast iron handle. Uh, it's about an inch thick, two, two and a half, two and two and a half feet long cast iron piece. And uh, had a, even a little ball on the tip of it that I know if I can plant it in his fucking skull, he's going to know I was there. <laughs> and uh, of course, this guy, like any other fucking prisoner keeps his eyes open. You don't just get to walk up behind the fucking guy once he's put his hands on you. Uh, unless you're fucking completely fucking out of it. Uh, you don't you don't allow it. And uh, I was insulted that the fucking guy thought he could do it and just not be that worried about it. Uh, I, I had I was aching to do something. I should have done it right away. I told myself, beating myself up the whole fucking time of taking this fucking handle off of this thing. And, uh, but I had to be cute in how I approached them so I don't give them the heads up. I mean, this guy's a big guy. I'm fucking a buck 20, you know? And, uh, and I tell you this much is not a broken braggadocia thing. I'm telling you what it is to be a kid in the prison system and how you are, you got no fucking choice. You gotta make this fucking move no matter what. And that's the end of it. I already know what's gonna happen. There's gonna be punishment behind it, potentially a state charge. You don't even think of that shit. Yeah, you have to do something, and that's the end of that. Uh, unless you're a fucking coward, and then that's the end of it. That's the end of that. That way. <laughs> um, so what I did was to catch uh, to catch this guy sleeping, so to speak, or at least ro uh, rock him to sleep for a brief moment, just so I can get up on him. Is uh, these guys were playing cards nearby on the break? I knew they were going to be playing cards, and so I told these guys. Uh, I knew where the card table was. I knew where this guy was going to be positioned. He did this thing. Where they got these metal plates. You have to make the plate. You make a design on it. And you fucking, I guess, a little, uh, for lack of a better term, you electrify this fucking image onto the fucking metal plate. And then you attach that to a print machine. And you print whatever the image is on there after on a different machine. So he's making his fucking plate, standing up, making his plate. I told these guys, when the card game starts, or this guy, the particular guy, when the card game starts, uh, you call me over to take your hand. Uh, when this motherfucker's doing his thing, he knew what happened. He knew what I had to do. Uh, any good kind of love to get involved in it. <laughs> I mean, a smart con stays out of it, minds his business, but 
guys didn't like this fucking guy. It was working in my favor as far as having somebody get involved. Um, sure enough, he's doing his fucking plate. Dean, take my hand for a minute. I got to take a quick piss. All right. He looks up, looks up. All right, all's clear. This fucking kid's only got to take his hand. He ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> That's his fucking thinking, I'm guessing. And uh, this allows me to pass next to him. Uh, you know, I got the pipe hidden behind me just right when my hands are free, but it's hanging in the back. I can grab this motherfucker and uh, I go behind him. Nearly behind him. I couldn't get completely behind him. Just enough out of his fucking peripheral to get this motherfucker out. And I go to town on his fucking head. Uh, I only get the clipping twice in the f- cracking twice in the fucking head before he's fucking <laughs> screaming bloody murder, which we call dry snitching. Uh, when you get hit, you should be taking that hit quietly. You're not screaming. And because uh, if not, I mean, you're trying to draw the attention of the fucking screw. And in the old days, the screw was fucking, I don't know, fucking, I don't know how many fucking yards away, uh, probably doing a fucking crossword puzzle or something. And uh, he's screaming and hollering, he's reaching for me. He can't see me because the blood's up in his eye. I'm like a little fucking, you know, jackrabbit jump all around, smash, bing, bing, bash, smash, bouncy, bouncy, smash, <laughs> whatever the fuck. And, uh, He's trying to hold on to me and scream, and he can't see, and I smash him in the face a couple of times. Basically, I open him up pretty good. By the standards of the prison of that day, with all the fucking violence that was going on, this wasn't shit. Let me tell you that. But I'm a kid stepping up to the plate for the first time in Max, and uh, I thought this this will get the job done, Tony. You know, that was my thinking. Um, I learned later, uh, this fucking guy, he didn't go down as easy as I thought he would, for one. Two, you know, it's an insult to smash a guy and still be in the building with a lady. He's supposed to send the fucking guy out. He's just like, he's like that after that. And I, 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 I have some of this advice clearly. And from there, uh, that point on, I would send people out. If I had a problem, I'd, I'd open them up good enough with a, a, a shank of some kind to send them out. Uh, not to speak and speak so fucking, be so bland about the fuck. I mean, so... Uh, uh, not to fucking be so simple about it. Uh, the word eludes me. But uh, pris- violence was just a, that prison of violence in maximum securities or any fucking prison at any time, even now, uh, is the universal language. It's the only fucking language some guys can speak. Threats and mean faces and all that fucking bullshit is out the window. If you're not actually committing an act of violence, then nobody's impressed. And they're gonna fucking try it. Even after you can stab ten fucking guys, there's always a guy willing to try it. Don't get me wrong, but the universal language to uh, to send the message out I'm not to be fucked with is to um commit assault of some degree, where his his skull is open, or you're putting a fucking knife in his belly or in his fucking liver, uh, or you're taking a razor to his fucking throat. Uh, sometimes you're gonna get your hands on certain types of weapons. You know, you could be in a situation where some little tiny fucking fragment of metal is all you got. If you want to say a supermax, you got to make the best you can out of it and make the best work you can with it. Uh, be that as it may, I hit this fucking guy in the head and um, more than once. And uh, the funny thing is, this is the old days when I had these old cons around from like the fucking, there was guys left over from the 40s and 50s in their 70s at the time. And some of them had these fucking choo-choo train hats on and fucking farmer jeans and a goddamn thing. And these were like the old school guns from way back when. Um, so you got the goon squad. They come running up in the fucking shop. Me, I stashed a weapon. This guy's out of it. He's st- still standing, uh, much to my fucking chagrin, I guess. And um, <laughs> But he can't see his fight games over. I got him pretty good. I'm hiding this fucking pipe under a fucking, under a sink. And trying to go on about I'm covered in this guy's fucking blood. And they're like they're looking around, they see me, and they're coming right up. Uh, if you notice how he said he was only like 120 small, him and his yeah. brother were very like my friend Chris, his bro, uh, his older brother. They're very small guys, you know. But these guys were heavily respected and feared because listen, he's what he's right. When you went into an, Oh, when you walked into the AC high in 1984, you had predators. Like, everything he's saying is just, like, straight up. And anybody who's been in prison would agree with me. 
I've never been, I've only spent a few weeks in prison, but I have a lot of friends and family who did. So I've heard stories like this. And yeah, uh, him and his brothers were feared and they were real close with my uncle and them in prison. Uh, back then, like I said, like he's talking about, there was these old heads in prison, uh, like a lot of wise guys and, and maximum security, the wise guys, may it be Gerard were met, my uncle, Raymond, whoever was in there, uh, they would be uh, running things. And they probably seen his potential and all that, and he started staying with them. But, yeah, you had to be dangerous, especially a small guy like this. He did the right thing. If not, he would have been a victim. Anybody, they would have been a victim, raped, abused constantly. But, uh, yeah, hit, hit play. Thanks. Yeah, I, I – Wow. It's interesting, ain't it? it sounds yes, like it it's uh, and it's scary. Like it's really scary. I think that see, like men like him, they should, they should be telling these stories to kids, not these wannabe, not these rats who pretend, you know, uh, that they were something that they weren't, and and they sit there and one day they they're glorifying it, and then the next day they oh, but don't do what we did, kids. Yeah, if that you already glorified it. Yeah, and see, Dean's doing the opposite. Dean is exactly. Humble. He's even playing himself down big time. Like you know what I mean? He and he's changed his life. He's married. He's got a beautiful infant baby, a wife. He's doing really good. So when Scotty hit me up and told me at a channel, I had to uh, put it out there to let people know. No, I know. I think this is so. Uh... Well, really is. I wouldn't want to live like that. Like that's a tough. Never. That's why I never did crimes and stuff because I don't want a life of prison. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But exactly. uh, when you do go there, you got to survive. And yeah, he tells a good story. And this is a stand-up guy and a good guy. Yeah, now he met. So he was a kid, and he met your uncles while he was in there. Uh yeah, he must have met him in uh oh, maybe '84 when he was when he ended up or he '83 '84 when he. Well, he ended up in 83. My uncle went there in 84. So they must have met in like 84 because he was in Max. Okay. My uncle's in Max. Uh, that's where they uh, they met. So so people in those men in those days back then, so they stood in the prison in Rhode Island? Yeah, it's called the Adult Correctional Facility. It's in Franston, Rhode Island. If anybody in Rhode Island gets in trouble, state charges, that's where you go. Now, the only oh, way you're not okay. is if you get fed charges and get, you know, sent to the wire and then shipped out to some federal uh, penitentiary. Okay, okay. But everybody but in Rhode Island who goes to jail goes to the ACI. Okay, see, now in New York, like, uh, they don't necessarily, state or not, I mean, yeah, they state. I mean, they, they stay in New York, but it's like far. Like my my brother was uh, seven hours away. My nephew is eight hours away. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, you got to think my state is so small. The exactly. really smallest okay. state in the union, the second smallest state is Delaware. You could fit four Rhode Islands in Delaware. We are tiny. So anybody in the state can get to see their uh, Cranston within all right, anybody in Rhode Island can hit the ACI within an hour, not even an hour, four, five, most people, five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, not even. But let's okay. say you're way down south near Narragansett, it might take you a half hour, 40 minutes to get there, if that, if that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Let me play this. This is unbelievable. And I'm what? The fuck? What? What? The guy's going, what the fuck? Yeah, he's coming in blood. Whoa. What the fuck? I ain't mind. What the fuck? I don't know what the fuck's going on. I ain't, I don't, uh, let's go. But anyway, he goes out for us. Now, this guy's a known fucking bully, pervert, cocksucker. And um, a lot of these old times are out in front of what, what's called the shop entry um, door. It's a, it's a big industrial building in the yard of the prison. I separated from the cell block. So there's a, eh, probably a dozen or so guys out in the yard being a little nosy. They want to see who's coming out. They know someone got hurt. Who's coming up? Here comes this fucking asshole, um, covered in blood. They're fucking escorting them all, you know, the victim. And people are like, yeah, this motherfucker. You can see the body language. People, some snickering, like he got his finally, huh? And out comes this fucking little fucking kid. I might have just turned 17 at the time. I could have been 16. And the little kid that everyone was, because I was the talk of the town. I was the youngest guy in the fucking building. Um, and uh, the cheers went up. Like, fucking as if, you know, not that I, it was a heroic act, but that's right, kid, you get that motherfucker type of fucking thinking. It was fucking quite the moment. 
was my introduction uh, to that building in a sense. And uh, uh, to extend the story into uh, something else, uh, I'm, in, I'm in the hole that night, and uh, segregation is supposed to be isolated from uh, the rest of the general population, and you are. But uh, in those days, we didn't have gangs, but the mob guys had uh, control of the fucking system. I mean, the convicts themselves had a, a lot of control over it, but the mob had the the most uh, influence and control. And uh, this fucking cop or a captain in, um, you know, in, the, in the mafia, for fucking lack of a better term, I want to, for those of you that may not know other terms, um, you know, I had seen him around. He had seen me around. I think he knew my mother. My mother was known in the streets by these guys. And uh, he comes down, t tells the fucking screw open it, though. I got to go see the kid. This guy was right out of the fucking movies. Any local guy watching this knows uh, who Rudy was. And uh, That's my uncle. He was the, uh, the type of guy Hollywood would cast in a fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Well-respected guy by the cons. Oh, well, hey, it depends on what lens you're looking for. Maybe maybe somebody, you, you know, got whacked by the fucking guy or something. I don't know. <laughs> in any event, comes over to my cell. He's got a big, this big black dude with him because you uh, he want a black uh, con to represent the, uh, the blacks, so to speak, and, and it shows respect to an extent. Plus, this was this a guy he had around him. Um, not to mention, you know, there's Italians, and then he had this guy's, uh, this mob guy's strong point was he had a, a lot of cons or ex cons when he's on the street. Uh, he had a, an army of them. He had his own fucking people, uh, the white guys, but he had an army of street guys, and, and it's a smart play on his part because. I think the reason why guys like him do that is because if he got an issue, an internal issue with the fucking mob, he can't go to fucking, he can't trust none of those guys to make a move against another guy all in that same circle. So now he's got this fucking private army over here. And I was, I would grow to become part of this, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a private army of, you know, street guys who weren't in the mob, but well associated, uh, but who were loyal okay. to him. He's telling the exact truth. Uh, my uncle Rudy uh, had his, he had like a little army in there. Guys like him, uh, a few other guys that are alive, I'm not going to say their names, that were uh, like his private army. They'd walk with him. They were like his guys. My uncle had a lot. He ran maximum security in Max. He ran Max in case Raymond was there. If Raymond wasn't there in the feds, my uncle ran that thing. And he, he <laughs> and yeah, these guys would walk with him and, the whole nine. That's all I had to say, but that's what he meant. And oh, RIP right. to my Uncle Rudolph. Great. Yes, man. yes, yes, yes. Each of these fucking wise guys all over the country, I'm sure, had guys outside the fucking their family, so to speak, um, that were loyal to him. I grew up, and then this began my friendship. When he comes over to my cell, hey, kid, you did the right thing. And don't you worry about this fucking guy. There'll be no retaliation here. We're going to put an end to it right now. Good fucking job. And I'll tell you, <laughs> probably the proudest moment of my fucking entire life in my criminal career. Doing his uh, voice. You know, I would grow to become disillusioned with that life later on and be around those guys. But hey, at that time, that guy in that place, uh, I would, uh, I mean, to this day, the guy's long passed on, but uh, he was a very good man. He took care of me. I had a brother, a couple of brothers who served a lot of time, but my brother and I were close to this gentleman. And uh, in the future, I won't bring up his name, but I'll refer to him, I'm sure, in different scenarios. Or in my book, I write about him. Um, and uh, that was my, uh, you could even say, my first stepping stone. Uh, I had always known as a kid, you see mob guys in one of their and stuff, and uh, we all wanted to emulate them, and we were oppressed as hell with them. They were our gods, our street kids, us young criminals, us young teenagers, uh, long it's, before I knew a fucking he what? He did my uncle. Hey, kid, kid, get the dog in the house, kid. Hey, kid, he did it. He knows. He spent many years with him in there. Oh, man, that's funny. When I heard him do that voice, I started dying. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is that, are you the kid he's talking about, talking to? Get the dog no, in the house. My uncle, yeah, my uncle. Hey, kid, get the dog in the house. Oh, but that's what, is that how he, what he would tell you? Hey, kid? 
Yeah, that's how he, you know, his voice. Was like, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, okay. Like, that's how he sounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And he was on a general cast and real good person, though. Oh, like, literally okay. clothed people. Like, uh, when it came time for kids to go to school, there'd be like 15 people lined upside the house. And he hit them all with school money. He took care of his people. He was good. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm okay. mute. Fucking, um sports figures or anybody else you would know <clears throat> you would know as a young teen i wasn't in school i was on the street so crime was my fucking uh, uh the crime was my teacher and uh, the mob guys were our gods and you know that was a life i would embrace you know as a career criminal i would go on to serve three major sentences total in 36 fucking years but uh my friendship it was a step into that world as well around those people because i would go on to develop as i said a friendship with this man and uh but he, it was a good moment for me for this man to come to my cell and tell me that uh whatever else he said and, and, but um to keep it in context you know he let me know good job kid i'm glad you stood up for yourself and all that type of thing and got that fucking it's almost like you get the nod, as they say, from a guy like, good job. No, I'm not trying to fucking sell us as a fucking some big mob story. This is a story of a kid out the gutter who would go on to no mob bosses and stuff, which is, you know, not that unusual in my city because it's a small city where I grew up in, in Providence. And Providence was the hub of New England organized crime. Uh, it was just a mob town. Uh, and that's all there is to it. They called the shots even over Boston at the time, all over New England. And it was just uh, just uh, not unusual to rub shoulders with them guys. In any event, uh, this fueled my fucking, uh, my criminal fucking uh, thinking. My, it would fuel my endeavors in the future. And uh, so began my fucking uh, lessons and, and crime to help how to be a better criminal as opposed to how not to commit crime anymore. I, that's the road I choose to go down. This is not a what was me story. This is not a fucking, this is me just telling you how the fuck I started my life. I had already began the fucking life when I went on my crime sprees and shot guys as a juvenile and got waved into the fucking prison system. But this elevated me to a new level, a new status of thinking, a new status in perception. And it's probably more so in your head when you're a kid, but in any event, that is uh, my early steps into uh, being around wise guys. My early steps into developing a reputation that is the worst thing that can happen to you, honestly, because now you spend years maintaining this fucking, uh, this reputation that your false pride will fucking uh, want to uphold. Or pride, however you look at it. Um, sometimes I go into layman's terms and I that terms that Joe Citizen may use. Uh, for the benefit of the listener. But listen, I believed in that fucking life. Now, when I got older, you know, I become disillusioned. I've been ratted on so many fucking times. I kept my mouth shut. I suffered the consequences of believing in that life only to find out it's a bunch of fucking nonsense. What happens is you can get stuck. And I was stuck for years. Even if I didn't believe in it anymore, picking up the gun and robbing a bank was uh, the only way I know how to do it. In any event, that's my uh, early steps into that game. My first early steps at a ele uh, slightly elevated level from juvenile punk with a handgun shooting guys on the street to a guy who wanted to uh, be a little more organized. <laughs> organized crime, so to speak. Not that I was any big player in the game. I know a few local guys. I knew some guys out of town, but I, I was by no means ever no big fucking mob guy. So let's set that straight here. This is not braggadocio. You know what I mean? We call myself a big tough guy. Um, there was plenty of dangerous guys to go around. That was just a common thing. Nowadays, I'm looked upon as this violent fucking savage. But in those days, hey, the city and the prison was full of savages. And uh, I was just one of many. And uh, I can say now that that life is behind me. But I haven't said that, you know, I wrote a book while I was incarcerated. I wrote several. And... Uh, one of them I self-published while I was still in prison. It's called Dark Impressions. It's a fictitious uh, journey of, a, of the protagonist, Kevin Collins, 
Oops, he's an Irish kid. He won't get me. But it, it's very realistic and an accurate depiction of what it is to go to prison at 16, what it is to rub shoulders with those guys at that age and grow up around it. Uh, if you want a good look at that and the, of the, the city of Providence in the, in the 80s era, with all of that mixed in it, buy my book, Doc Impressions, on Amazon.com. Uh, I'll see you again soon, and uh, I'll take you to the next level or the next segment of how I started to progress in the prison system and uh, as a criminal on the street. Hello. Yeah, I'm actually looking really. I'm actually looking forward to listening to these videos. Uh, and yeah, we're not promoting. Listen, and once again, people are gonna say, "Oh, these are promoting the mob." And I, no, this guy's actually telling people not to go down that lifestyle. And I'm just doing a friend a, fa- uh, a favor. My buddy Scotty hit me yeah. up, told me that. And this guy, like I said, his brother's my friend, and he was friends with my uncle. But it was a very interesting story, for sure. And I, yeah. it was really funny when I heard him talk. And my uncle came to came to him was proud. That's how my uncle was. He probably hated that predator, seen this young kid stick up for himself and fell in love with the kid. Because my uncle was had a big heart. And when he would he would help a lot of young kids who entered the prison system. Or if people had family, some young kid got jammed up, like my uncle would make sure nothing happened to them. And they would protect them. And like you said, he had a small little army, not to mention all of his other wise guy pals in there too. Yeah, right. Yeah, interesting and, story. Yeah, it seems like a, a lot of people, I don't know how to say this. Uh, uh, like, they, they, they let you know that that's, yeah, it looks all glamorous and uh, and exciting, but it's, it's really not. Well, that's what the Finks do. The Finks make it out to be like that, but then they throw it at the end. Oh no, no, no! But they, but they'll say it's not glamour, but they'll make it look like that. No, it's not. It's uh, losing your, your family members going to jail. Uh, kids crying that their family members are in jail. Uh, losing all them years with them. Uh, dying or, or or someone's uncle or cousin becomes a rat, and then they're looked at as bad. It's it's not a uh, it, it's not glamorous or great at all. And no. if anybody joins that kind, I don't even think they're even around no more, in my opinion. But uh, if they were, anybody joins that, you got to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. But if you do do something like that, walk it to the end. Uh, don't tell on people. That's all I say. You know. No, exactly. If you're um, gonna be something, if you're gonna be Superman, Batman, or a mailman, be a good one and be it to the end. Wow, you know, like you. You know when they tell when when I hear people tell the stories of prison, it it like I get so sad listening to it because you know they they come a lot of these older guys like my father and this man Dean and and I'm sure you know uh, your uncles they they grow up so poor and yep. and. Sometimes, like with my father's situation, his father, who is the greatest grandfather on the planet, but the worst father on the planet, you know, and so they they don't have any um, what's the, like other outlet uh, something yeah like you know positive role model to push them in the right direction you know to uh, hey you're gonna go to school and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that no they're you know, like my grandfather was was always gone, you know, and so my and my grandmother was, uh, you know, so poor. They were so poor, feeding. You know, I mean, she ended up having a, a well, thirteen thirteen kids, but eleven lived. So eleven kids, and my uncle couldn't even finish school. He had to go out and get a job, yeah. you know. And my uh, and and my aunts who were twins, they had to do like all the stuff around the house. And my grandmother went out to work. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, that's what happened with uh, Damien. The street, these kids. Yes, exactly. Happened to Damien's father. Damien's dad got thrown out by his dad. Uh, hit the streets. Started doing crazy stuff. My uncle knew him since he was an infant. So my uncle threw an arm around him and schooled him in that world and brought him into that world. Uh, and it happened to my uncle. He was, my uncle grew up in the depression, you know, 
he grew yeah. up in the depression. So I remember him telling me a story when he was a little boy. All the the neighborhood needed coal. People were cold at night. It's during the depression. So him and his little pals were like eight years old. So they used to go to this bridge with these big boulders and rocks and wait for the train to come by with all the coal on it. And they would throw the boulder. I told this at his uh uh, at his wake when I gave the eulogy I told the story so they would grab the boulders and throw the boulders off of the bridge and it would hit the coal trains and all the coal would bounce off it and they'd run down there pick it up with sacks bring it home to their parents and leftovers they would go give it to the old ladies and widows and stuff like that yeah I had to do stuff like that it was you know a different time wow it really was. It was a different time. And like 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 my father and my uncle Angelo grew up together, right? And it always like like today I wish that I I I I wish I knew back then what I know today. So I like I I should have asked my dad. Like my uncle Angelo, his family had money. You know, his mother and father owned I believe it was a bakery. Um so he had money. Like, what led him into the the direction of my father, hmm. who was just a street kid? Oh, who knows? That become maybe they, they become their buddies, start hanging around yeah. with them, and it you know it rubs off on them, or uh, I don't know. That's it. Yeah, that is. Uh, who knows? Maybe, like I said, they become friends with these people, and you know, just follow them or. Uh, that's what they uh, gravitate to. It's fun. That's what they, that's the guys they get along with or have something in common with. But probably everybody's got a different story why they gravitated towards that. Yeah. But wow. yeah, it, it was an interesting story to listen to. And yeah, the ACI was very uh, for a 19 year old kid, 18 year old kid to walk into maximum security in 1983. Let me tell you. Yeah, you're going to have to do just what Dean did, or you are going to be Tobias Beecher, a prag, without a doubt. Yeah, exactly. It, it was like a gladiator school back then. It was ran, like he said, there was one screw, one CO, uh, and I heard all these stories from my uncles and older guys. There was one CO watching a bunch of guys. He didn't care if he sees people stabbing each other. He's not getting involved and breaking it up. It was a gladiator camp. Yeah. And he was just, I mean, 16 years old. But then again, back then, back then, 16 years old is not the same as 16-year-olds today. No, but they're still built the same, same size. Yeah. But it has to be mental-wise. Yeah. What's up, Mikey? Uh, Mentally-wise, I know what you mean. But, yeah, but uh, that's got it. Like he said, he was 120. He was 120 pounds. Wow. He was a big guy in his 40s trying to chicken hawk him and, and uh, do bad things to him. So, and that wasn't going to happen. So he he, he, he he smartly knows that he can't take this guy on right away and charge him. The guy's bigger than him. So he sneaks him and gets him at that card game and opens him up. And everybody oh respected God. him. That. Yeah, and, my, yeah. and I know my uncle. My uncle hated. My uncle hated sexual predators. He hated perverts, dirty talkers. So he must have loved that. As soon as he seen that, he probably fell in love with him, for sure. I'm looking forward yeah. to more of his stories. Yeah, I know it's uh, very, very interesting. And, and I would love to like know like what happened. He got out. Did he meet his wife in there? Did he meet his wife outside of there? I don't know that, but uh, yeah. I'm sure they tell stories and other videos. I guess he's had the channel for like, what's up, Chris? Uh, three uh, three months now. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had it for like three months. I don't know how much he uploads. He uploaded one two days ago, and before that was a few months. Because, you okay. know, like I said, he doesn't know technology and all that and how to promote things and stuff. So I just wanted to help uh, my friend's brother and my uncle's buddy out and share the channel. And, and if it wasn't for Scotty, I would have known about it. Scott hit me up and yeah. told, told me about it. Yeah. Oh, oh, all right. Good. Yeah. That's how I knew about it. I found out this morning. What's up, Damien? Hi, Damien. Hi, Farmhouse Decor. Hello, Mr. Smith and Gerard. Fly me to the moon. Hey, Teresa. Um, Mandy, Mandy, but they were the best generation. 
and we will not get out of the 20s with the single one left. It is sad. Yeah. A whole gen uh, great generation is going to be gone. Yeah. Angel, uh, I mean, sometimes that life chooses you. And when reality comes knocking at your door, it's hard to change and grasp the situation because that life is all you know. Hi, Chris Trock. Yeah. Um, oh, Gianni. Yeah, uh, that's what we do, Gianni. That's what we do. Because, yeah, exactly. Wow. It, I, I'm still like in... in uh, like you know like when you watch something or someone tells you something and you and you keep thinking about it you can't get it out of your head well, like, that's I pretty was, sorry because imagine exactly. if he was imagine if he was some weak kid yeah that exactly. would have been a victim right there and not only that guy would have victimized the young man like that other predators would have seen oh look how easy he got to him and i bet you that's happened before a lot a lot. But like I said, my uncle and other guys too, like were met, uh, uh, Raymond, a lot of these guys that were in there, when they would see young kids come in, especially Italian kids, their heart would go out and they would protect them. What's up, Cheech? Yeah, if you got a great father. Cheech's father's a great man. But look, uh, he was so hungry one night, he ate so telling himself it was cheese. See, that makes me, it gets, it, I get so uh, uh, emotional when, when, like my father told what that us stories. Did. What happened? Oh, no, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, here's a guy eating soap and thinking it's cheese. And uh, he came to America, built a beautiful home, a beautiful family. His sons fought for this country. Uh, yeah, what were you going to say now about your dad? No, yeah, because my my dad at the end, you know, like uh, start, he never told us these stories, you know, all his life. You know, I guess because um, I loved my grandfather so much, so he wouldn't tell, you know, us the stories of how badly abused th th him and his brothers and sisters were. But because we, my grandfather was such an amazing grandfather. So at, my mother would tell us, and I really didn't want to believe my mother because I loved my grandfather. But at the end, like when we would, you know, go there and him and my mother would talk about, you know, like, like, I, I'll never forget my father said, like, uh, today, like, uh, if, if what him and his brothers and sisters went through today, what they did back then, they would, his parents would have gotten the electric chair. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, nope. back then, the fathers really whooped the kids. Exactly. My dad got it from my grandfather, too, the whoopings. Not that bad, but he got whoopings bad. Yeah, I mean. A whole generation, you know, like they yes, really. Yes, they did. Uh, Santa Miguel. Yeah, they really caught whoopings. Like our generation knows nothing about that. My father was heavy handed with me when I was a kid, and there was nothing compared to what those people went to. So I shouldn't even complain about that. Now, my father was like, I saw born uh, way back in the 30s, so he'd give me scoffs in the head. <laughs> But I was a yeah, great yeah, you see. Oh, there's Dean. Oh, there's Dean's wife right there. Oh, where? Uh, at 9.20. Oh, uh, there, there, uh She says, it's Dean's wife. Dean would like to engage at you sometime. Oh, yeah. If he's wanted to oh, uh, drop the link. Come on now. Yeah, if he wants to come on now. Uh, come on, come on. We would love to have him. I, I can't oh, find her. 9.20. Yeah, 9.20. Uh, if you want to come out, hey, uh, have him come on now or another time, a planet. Yeah, definitely come yeah, on. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Because I believe he, like I said, he's good. Oh, book, here it so. is. Hi. We shared the uh, channel. We even showed a video. We just showed a, one of your videos, and that's what we're talking about right now. Oh, and, Angel, uh, you're an, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you're an animal lover. You got to see her cat. She's got this big. Oh, really? That's in one of the videos. Uh, she says, not sure how to come on. See, they don't know how to work. You yeah, I, yeah. well, we could drop the link and you can try. I'll explain it to them. Yeah, okay. we'll Let us know if, you go, if you're if you on the phone or if you're on the computer because it makes a well, difference. Well, here's what's going to happen. She's going to drop a link, right? Uh, uh, and you're going to press on that link. And once you press on that link, you're going to mute the YouTube first. First, mute the YouTube. 
and mute the YouTube so you can't hear us, then press on that link and it's going to take you to a little studio and uh, it will say, turn on mic, this and that, and we'll see you. We can bring you in. So click on that link, but first mute the YouTube or we will echo. Oh, she's got an iPhone. All right. Uh, click on that link. Uh, but before you do, mute this YouTube. Yeah. Well, maybe with an iPhone, she might not have to mute the YouTube. because it's. Yeah, right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, just click the link and it'll be able to bring you in. Yeah. Um, Sean, this is so true because my dad did as well, him and his brothers and sister, and yet my dad didn't hit us. My dad didn't hit us. So, and then... You know, and then naturally when we grew up, I mean, I didn't um, beat my kids. You know what I mean? I was I was more of a punisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother's the same way. Well, there's a few times my mother took the uh, took her shoe to me getting suspended as a kid, but only a couple of times. My mother's a sweetheart. Got the best yeah. mother in the world. He's on an iPhone. The link well, it's not is him. It's his, it's his wife. He probably don't know how to do all that. You got to take this yeah. guy's security. Six. When did he get out? Uh, only a few months ago. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm so glad. So, so that, explain you know. it. Explain it to them now while they're trying to do it. What to do? All right. She said I clicked the link and Google Chrome showed up. Oh, she probably don't even have. Uh, all right. Well, hit the Google Chrome. Yeah, it's probably, I, it's probably yeah. asking you to if you want to use Google Chrome to join. So I would click on the Google Chrome. Okay, let me see. Because they probably just, they never joined StreamYards before, so that would take them a sec. Uh, but yeah, I it had a beautiful minx cat. This thing was huge. I thought it was like a, a bobcat or something. Yeah, I forgot when, when, um, when uh, you're on the iPhone, what you do. I'm, I'm going to. Can you drop the link again? You might have to drop it again. Yeah, I'll drop it again. But yeah, uh, uh, it's good to come on and promote your book and promote your channel. And I'll be promoting your channel on mine. So. Um, Hi, the wooden spoon, Chicago Muscle said. <laughs> I used to get hit with the wooden spoon for my grandmother. Oh, I got hit with whatever, whatever my mother could find. She hit me with it. <laughs> whatever was next to her. <laughs> yeah, see, me too. I only got hit one time in my entire life by my father. I don't know. I, I, my father probably, oh my God, a lot of times. I can't even count how many times. Oh, you cracks. did? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hard cracks, too. Okay. See, uh, Teresa says, press on the link, then press Google. It will direct you to StreamYard. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to drop the link for her again. Uh, thanks, Teresa. Yeah. And then she, <laughs> Teresa said to, Press on the link, then press Google. It will direct you to StreamYard. Uh, Damien said my mother did all the beatings. Yeah, that's it. My mother did that. You know, my father didn't hit us. I guess he figured if he did, he would hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, the girl a, a man's voice, uh, a male's voice alone is going to scare the crap out of kids. You Listen. Don't have to Listen to me. My father had this uh, amazing talent of fitting that big giant fist of his into his mouth that when you saw him do that, oh, here, do, oh, hi, they're here. He's smiling. How nice. Hi, how are you? Unmute, Dean. You're going to unmute. unmute. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, the, the microphone. Yeah, oh, they're muted. They don't know how to. Oh, no. Oh, they'll figure it out. Yeah, they uh, are. If there's a microphone okay, there. Let me ask somebody. How did we. Um, good. Oh, there you go. There you go. You, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm better now. Thanks to it's you. Nice. <laughs> How you doing, Dean? I, I keep Look. calling you Chris. I keep saying that Chris is muted. I keep calling I, you Chris. I, I appreciate you guys. You gave me a big boost already. Let me tell you. I uh, don't worry about it, man. Scotty hit me up and told me about it. I was on it. Uh, your brother, your brother was a good pal of mine when he was out for that year. We hung out all the time with the old man's and the other guys, and 
Uh, he was just a good person. Uh, yeah, and you sounded and looked just like him. Yeah, I just about gave up on this. You guys just renewed my whole faith in the whole thing. <laughs> well, don't give up. Listen. Don't give up because uh, you don't know the people on here. They love hearing these stories. So don't yeah. give up. Whatever. whatever. I, I just sat here for 24 minutes like with my mouth open listening yeah. to you. Oh, and Scotty, I'm sure he'll be listening at some point. I want to thank him, too, because without him, uh, you wouldn't even heard about the site. No, so. I wouldn't have known. Scotty hit me up and told me I would have not have known. Yeah, I was thinking about, so, uh, Angel, right? Yes. What do, you, do you have a podcast or something as well? Well, this is it. You're on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, you get some idea now how much what I know about technology. I mean, I no, understand. I know. Wow, this is big. <laughs> hey, guys, Dean, I love the uh, that story you told with Rudolph coming in. You did Rudolph's voice perfectly. Hey, kid, what are you doing, <laughs> kid? You did his voice perfectly. I try not to kick any names around. I don't want to be that guy that throws names around. But uh, uh, local guys, I I figured they would. If I just said Rudy, they would know who I was speaking about. Because you know, I don't ever try to paint myself as some big shot. I was just a kid who was caught up in a mix with other guys. Uh, of a bigger reputation, we'll say, you know, but I was trusted by these guys, so that's just something about my character, right? 100%. Yeah. So, uh, see, MRE over here, that's his uncle, Rudy is his uncle, right? Right, that part I picked up on, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I did grow close to him when I was a kid, you know, uh, like you said, you, you described the ACI perfectly because, uh, it was Gladiator School, and I, I, I actually did three separate bids, I was, uh, you know, I just graduated from one crime to the next and ultimately ended up, you know, robbing banks for a living. And that was very costly, you know, uh, not with a note. We're talking about takeovers. That's why I ended up serving so much time. But uh, on this last bid. You also wanted to tell him you did a few different bids. Though. No, I told him I'd served se uh, three separate sentences total in 36 years. All state time, Dean? Excuse me? All state time, all state? Yeah. Well, I got arrested by the feds the last time, but if their case is weak, they'll let the state and uh, the state had charged me as a habitual offender while the feds were going to charge me with the banks. But I ended up with so much time that the the, the feds knew the case was weak because it's only circumstantial evidence. You know, uh, a guy that I had befriended, he knew certain key elements of the case, just enough where if you go in front of the jury, you could get taken a shot. So the feds kind of didn't push the issue, and I got so much time in the state, they backed off it. I ended up catching 30 years on my last sentence. I was 35 years old at the time, so uh, I was a nice... But I, I started making changes because the prison system changed just like the rest of the world, and it got real hard to do time because I was like a convict around what we... There's a difference between convicts and inmates, which I explain in, in video. So I was like a convict, a throwback from another time, and with all these new way of doing time. My adjustment in prison was difficult in, in itself, but so really I got kind of cornered into uh, making a change, which was the best thing that happened to me, I guess you could say, right? Yes. Uh, and I started writing because uh, a lot of 23 hour a day lock time, uh, lockdown in, uh, in the supermax and uh, I found writing just to try to keep my sanity. A lot How'd of you learn it? How'd you pick it up though? How did you learn to write and stuff? Well, I didn't. I just kept teaching myself. I bought material on how to write and I uh, just kept writing and writing and buying more books on how to put it. And I, even the novel itself, you'll find, you'll see the amateur style in it, which is why I'm revising it. In a sense, the original book is probably there's something to be said about that because I wrote it in there in that raw form. But I'm now revising it now that I've gotten better at it. But uh you know, I just bought books. I didn't really. And I, then I started, I took a couple of college courses on writing, uh, a couple of Brown University courses. And, uh, you know, I just kept improving. I'm still learning how to write. Don't get me wrong. It's a continuous thing. I'll probably be learning how to write for the rest of my life, you know. But did you take this college course in prison? Yeah, I got an associate. I ended up uh, acquiring an associate's degree in there. And then I got into a bachelor's degree program. But then I got released. And I'm thinking about going back to college now. I, I have a no. shock. Roger Williams University, believe it or not, because wow. I was so high. But, you know, don't get me wrong. I, uh, I'm terrible with the math. I did well with everything else. My wife wanted to remind me of something. What was that, Carol? You wrote something and you shared it. Well, I was going to tell him that what happened is I wrote 
Well, you've seen the video about the Molotov cocktail that was tossed through the window when I was a kid, right? Yes, yes. Well, I, I wrote that. I had that in the field. By the time I was 13, I watched the light go out of a few guys' eyes. It's just a coincidence I happened to be there. One guy was shot. Another guy watched drowned. Uh, he was being chased by the cops. He jumped, jumped into a river and wore it. So I wrote those stories down, but I showed the Molotov cocktail story to another hardened guy. And it kind of moved the guy. He goes, if you don't keep writing, uh, something wrong with you. I forget how we put it, but it kind of inspired me to keep writing. So I wrote, I first, I started working on an autobiography. Then I realized I can't write anything. I don't want to incriminate myself. So I just wrote a fiction story and give you a depiction of what it was like to be around those crimes, but they're fictitious crimes. You follow me? Right, yeah. right. I'm not trying to associate, associate them with real crime. I don't want some cop to read the book and think he's going to solve a crime. So I, I, I wanted to tell my story in a fictitious way, but there's a lot of stuff in there, like the, the kid's grandfather was in the IRA. I just put that in there to give it, to add other elements to it, you know? And uh, right. so basically uh, it got me through a lot of hard time, the writing. And, uh, and then I was going to put it down, but when I got, when I got out, I said, let me just, you know, I don't have a lot of time to write, you know, infant daughter, married, I work, I got a lot of stuff going on, but I'm going to keep pushing ahead with that. You never know. You never know what it can turn into. I can't, I don't know how to lay down. So. Well, <laughs> Ellen is the right person to see it, man. That's all. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask you, how long are you home? I've been, well, I've been home 15 months, although I was sat down. They sat me down for a month. I had a technical violation. And that month was the hardest time I ever did, like I said in the video, because uh, now I give a shit, you know, about life. I have a daughter, a wife, and, you know, before, I just didn't care if I lived or died to an, to an extent. You know, I was just a... And congratulations on the daughter and the wife. Yeah. I should show these guys. Oh, I don't want to put her on it. No, <laughs> don't put her on that. Give her a strike. Oh, the little girl's sleeping. Let me see if I can put this down. Oh. Can I see you? Oh, oh, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's Kira. She's beautiful. <laughs> now, how old is she? Six months old. Oh, congratulations. That's great. So you, so, I'm you going got out and you, did you meet your wife while in prison or after? Well, I don't want to give the impression she's some prison troll. I met her in prison, but not in the way you might think. It was just, I was on my way out and a friend of mine that was visiting me, which... You may know, you may know the gentleman. I don't really want to say his name. He's he's a local guy writing books. You know, guy Tony from down here. He's been writing books, Angel. Uh, Tony. He was, part of, he was a part of Crime Town that series. Uh, anyway, he was the star of Crime Town, so to speak. I, I'll leave his last name out. I don't know how he feels about his name, but anyway. Okay. He and his. Uh oh. He hit the wrong button. He'll be back. He hit the wrong button. Come back, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, Come when you, uh, it's good for him to learn uh, the YouTube. This and learn is, the yes, this is so great. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I was lucky that Scott, I was happy, Scotty. Uh, yes, we need that, uh, everybody to sub to him. Give him some subs. He's so, it, this is so good. Yeah, and uh, like I said, his stories uh, are interesting. For sure. Yeah, I hope he comes back. And that Come little on, baby dude. was precious. Beautiful. Yeah, that baby's back. beautiful. That's really nice. See, I love stories like that. When, you know, yep, somebody, somebody gets out. Good. Exactly. Yep. Somebody doing good. You know, they didn't, uh, uh, you know, they, they didn't become uh, cooperators and then they get on the internet oh. and start trashing the people that they put away and their families and this. I love a success story. I love yeah, it. And that is right there. Wow. Let me I'm drop it. He says, Deem sounds like a good guy. Yeah, you probably have to drop the link again. Yeah, I'm going to drop it just in case. Yeah, no, uh, that was interesting. I, I was just, you know, I was shocked when Scott told me because, you know, I didn't even know he got out or nothing, you know, because like I said, I don't know Dean. You know, I, I was friends with Chris, and he was friends with my uncle. Hello, Charles Sullivan. Well, did you um? Hello, Michael Argenti. Said to Miguel. Hello, and hello. Um, there was somebody else. We oh, Mike Wall. How are you? And Anthony Case Handler is Dean. 
Christ, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> yeah, we know you hit the wrong button. You had asked me a question. I think I was. Yeah, talking. so go ahead. You were talking about a guy named Tony. Oh, no. Well, in other words, uh, he was visiting me and he had uh, his girlfriend. They came to visit me and when she discovered uh, I was going to college and I had really made a serious change, she introduced me to her friend. You had a year left. You had a year left. Yeah, I had like a year left. Her friend was very reluctant, obviously. She wasn't chasing guys in prison, but she took a shot, and uh, I guess the rest is history. You know, I kept It was meant to be. God, listen, God, that was meant to be by God. That's yeah, what I believe. It, Things are meant to be. I, I probably would have made some terrible choices without her in my life by now, at this point. Now, I've gotten through a lot of stuff. I'm good, but... And you know what's funny, if I may say something? Oh. Go ahead, of course. <laughs> um, so... I told them, I said, listen, because they said, we're we're going to see a friend. I said, why are you going to see a friend? And you didn't even, am I just hearing about this now? And they go, would you be interested? And I said, you know, depends, like, depends what he's in for, like, how long, all this stuff. And I said, and if he's like, if he's a Capricorn, that's what I really want. Like, well, you know. <laughs> well, and you bless. are, you're a Capricorn? I am. Yeah, that's what I, like, was wishing for. Long story short, he called me. I didn't pick up the phone because I never called call before. He kept calling me. And um, I went up and saw him the first week that we started talking. And then COVID happened about a month and a half later. So we only saw each other for a month and a half visits. And then after that, it was all phone conversations. Yeah, because I took the visits away. And uh, hey, it was meant to be. Yeah. You know what I wanted to ask you, Dean? Uh, how, when was the first time you met uh, Rudolph, Rudy? Well, like I, I did a video. I was in the car. I think Angel might have been playing that earlier. Cause I yes, was, I did play that. I was. So uh, we, I got a little beef in the joint, and uh, you know, he seen me. Cause a lot of guys will back your play, but they first want to see if you'll defend yourself before they go getting there, right. not minding, you know, minding their own business. They want to make sure you defend yourself. They don't want to take on a guy, and then end up with a headache. And so he seen me defend myself against a predator, like the word you used earlier. And, uh, you know, he came to myself. But I think they may, he may have known my mother. My mother was uh, what you guys would know as a kumar. <laughs> uh, I didn't really know my mother that well. I didn't know my father. She wasn't. She didn't have uh, any nurturing skills. But when she was younger, she ran around with a lot of those guys. And uh, so she knew Nikki. I know you know that name. Yeah, yeah. And a bunch of other guys. And so I think he may have known who I was just because of that. And then uh, when I got into that first beef, he, uh, he intervened to make sure uh, there wasn't any going to be any type of type of uh, retaliation. Uh, and so he got a representative from the black cons and they came to my cell. And at the time, segregation or not, a guy like Rudolph can walk right into segregation. You follow me? <laughs> yeah. And they came right to my cell and uh, I just kind of, he ended up getting shipped to high security for one thing, me for another. And over there, you spend very uh, up close and personal time with somebody. And I spent a lot of time with him there, and then the rest is history. I got out. I kind of was around him sort of a little bit like that. And, uh, you know, he just looked out for me, made sure I always had lawyers and shit like that. You know, cause he guy was a like, great man. Yeah. You know, a guy like me, you're up one minute, the moment the next you're down as far as money and stuff like that. So certain things he made sure I always had access to, like lawyers and shit. And he, he was very helpful. Uh I wish I could have did more from him, but I was for him on his way out. But he passed away when I was uh, in the joint, so that always bothered me. Yeah, enough. we lost him in 2012. We lost him. Yeah, that was that's a uh, great loss for me. He was a mentor. I know, and a lot of guys uh, have a misconception. He was. Guys, whatever else you think about him and all his convictions, he uh, his criminal convictions, people think that all them guys know is crime. But listen, the guy was a mentor in a very healthy way. In fact, he's the one who inspired me to go to school when I was in Supermax. I got a GED back in the early 80s, in the mid-80s. And uh, people don't expect stuff like that. They think everything is crime, crime, crime. But that guy inspired me to go to school. What are you going to quit school, kid? Get, your, get back to school. <laughs> always inspired me to try to, you know, make a smart change, not do something stupid. Where a lot of guys that are in the life, uh, they look for kids with, without a father and shit. And they, that's because uh, they know they can shape you, you know? Ruff wasn't like that. He wasn't trying to shape me into uh, anything. I found my way there on my own anyway, but, you know, I was just a common criminal. I don't want, I'll never try to paint myself as some big shot, you know. Uh, but I had a variety of crimes. I got fucking arsons, tempted murders, a lot of gunplay and a lot of bank robberies. And uh, squandered my life with that, but it's never too late. 
as you can see. Right? Yeah, you're doing That's great. Right. And, and uh, when I seen your channel, I was like, oh, that's great, man. I seen you'd have, you did a video two days ago. I liked the video on the Blackstone River you were walking to. I seen that one. Yeah, you know, someone had reminded me, Dean, it doesn't always have to be crying. Maybe you could show a more civilized side. You know, I get, I get a little guidance here and there because, as you know, I'm uh, ignorant to a lot of the social media stuff. But, you know, I, I, I we got your back. Listen, we got your back. We'll share your stuff and all that. Don't worry. That's and uh, a, I don't know if you know Damien right here. His father was Rocco Argenti. Yeah. I seen the name. I assumed that was his dad. I, I didn't know him, uh, but I know who he was. Uh, the Foxy. Hey, Dean, how are you today? Yeah, the Foxy. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, my, well Ru Rudy actually mentored his father, too. He was close with him and mentored yeah, him. Rudy, him had men Rudy had mentioned him and Eddie's name to me years ago. They were young guys when Rudy was getting in trouble. I he mentioned their names to me before. They, uh, those were his his friends. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, those were the. Yeah, they loved him. They, they loved Rudolph. Well, and he Rudolph liked, loved him. Hot. He loved animals. Like he used to make me chase dogs, like oh. stray dogs. Like, yeah. He loved animals. He, he told me a story when he broke into a fucking. Uh, excuse my language. <laughs> he broke into a dog pound and let all the dogs out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just read something from uh from uh Justice Tech Pros. He said, Good evening, Angel and MRE. I am enjoying your guest, Dean, and I am looking forward to his videos. All the best to him and his family. Hello, all in chat. Hope you are all enjoying your evening. Thank you so much, Dominic. Thank you. What a huge step forward I made in the past couple hours, thanks to you guys. Let me tell you. Well, thanks to uh, his name is Nikki. I call him MRE, but oh, thanks well, to him. Technically, Scotty called me up and told me about it, or I wouldn't have found it. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's, that's what we do. We uh, we look out for our people in Providence. We're a small state, not yeah. many people, so we look out for our people. I'm gonna make sure I stay tuned to all the, to you guys and stop paying attention again. I, I'll stop yeah, upload more life. videos. Upload more videos. Get into it. Uh, you know, sometimes YouTube just uh, takes a drag for a little bit, but when you've got other people and other channels out there sharing stuff, and you're gonna learn how to tag the videos and stuff like that, and you know, there's some YouTube tutorials you can watch on how to tag videos and all stuff like that. And uh, your channel will take off, man. Trust me. Hey, I have a lot to learn. You see, I push one wrong button, and I'm uh, suddenly looking at somebody else on a different video. <laughs> well, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time, and you will learn over time for sure. Yeah. Well, Dean, but, uh, Dean, when you get a chance, yeah. check out WePushBack.com. I'm sorry. I said. think you WePushBack.com. You see the uh, the ticker on the bottom of anal. All right, we'll do. Of Angel's yeah. channel. Okay. It's a it's, website. It's a website yeah, it's, with a bunch of other channels on it and stuff, and everybody shares each other's things and things like that. Wow. Boy, did I tap into something really good here. Yeah, you're going to find a lot of good people in this in this in little this community little, that we have. In this little community, there's real good people. But there is a warning, though. There also are a lot of sick people who will troll and say rotten things. So just be aware of people trying to trick or... Uh, lie to you. There's a lot of stuff like that. Treachery on here, too. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a fucking odd comment towards me earlier, but not a comment, but the guy was asking. I don't even, I wasn't even sure what he by it, but I'll talk. Yeah, about pay it. no attention to it. Don't you even look at the bad stuff. And, uh, if you want to do this, right? Uh, I got that just from submitting my books, and the rejections you get made me stronger with that. So, you know, I'm prepared for that. Good. Yeah, you just have to ignore the uh, the whack jobs on here. And there are many whack jobs. You just have to ignore them. We do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll their comments for fuel. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly the right that that's the right mentality you need to have with these uh you know what I wanted that oh sorry to cut you off here. No, what high what school did you go to living on the West End? Did you have to go to Perry or uh, Central? Well, I never made it to high school out there, but I went to uh, Gilbert Stewart. Middle oh, school. Gilbert Stewart. All right. I was going to ask you what elementary school. All right. Uh, I got the GED while I was in uh, inside. So yeah, Dean, I went to George J. West. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just said I went to George J. West. 
Okay. So Dean, let me ask you this, what we were talking about before. So if, so you didn't basically have, um, like parents, right? Yeah. That's fair to say. So, so you were out in the street as a young kid. Yeah. By about, I had, my, I had a foster grandma that took care of me until I was 10. And I was pretty much out on the streets uh, in the West end from that age on, uh, I was in the training school very young, but I kept escaping. I escaped like four times. And on the fourth one, I ended up shooting a guy trying to steal a bank deposit bag. And that's how I got waved out at 16. So it was incarceration all the way through. So you were thrown in the ACI at 16? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was a wow. very thing. In Back in 83? Oh, my God. That's not. Nice. Yeah. But, you know, the, oh. uh, it's the only time in my life where having a violent streak came in handy. Uh, it's the only way to put it. Oh, you had to. Either succumb one way as a victim or you got to go full throttle the other way. And I already knew I was sent word to make sure they don't put you in protective custody because that can give you a black mark your whole bit. So I didn't do that. I went right into general population and it was on. Did they try though? When Because you were so young, did they ask you, you better go to protect? The thing about the ACI at the time was this. Like I told you, if you defend yourself, there was a lot of guys like you at the time you had your own chair, not like you see benches now. And I sat, you sat with your neighborhoods. And in my neighborhood in the West End, you had Federal Hill, which is also how I know Rudy. And you sat with all the guys in Federal Hill and Cranston Street, all up in the Harford area, all white yeah. guys sat on one side of the dining room, all the West Side guys. And so that's a lot of backing. But when I went to the intake center, I didn't know anybody there. And that's where it really got started. But Oh, did they ask me? Well, you want to hear something? I don't want to say it's funny. That's not the right term. They deliberately didn't put me in protective custody as well because the, the man I had shot in East Providence, uh, his son worked at the intake center. That's one of another odd twist to my story. Huh. Yo, at the prison. Wait a minute. So you're saying that the, the man that you shot, his brother? No, his father. His father his was father, like, worked at the father. prison? He worked no, at the no, prison? I'm the the man who was shot, his son worked at the prison. He was a guard at the intake center. So when I got there, they were waiting for me. And they kept trying to put me in odd circumstances, uh, situations, hoping I would get hurt. Oh, like, okay. You know, at the time, they didn't, wouldn't put, they didn't mix races at the time. They put me in a cell with some older black dude, but they didn't know I knew these guys. I just never landed with a, a guy that was too fucked up. But uh, I got to watch my language on here. I got a terrible mouth, guys. <laughs> one, one, I try to... <laughs> Uh, but in, in, I just, uh, I had to get in, you have to kind of establish yourself. I had to get in a little bit of trouble and, and every now and then you have to, as I say, renew your license to let, cause universal language in prison is violence. And, uh, you come in and I, I, I kept those, my stories about any of the brutal violence I kind of kept out of the videos. They didn't really seem appropriate. I gave you like the more lighthearted stuff, if I can say that. Uh, but I had to commit a couple of brutal acts to send that message. Uh, that weeds out, that prevents a lot of stuff. And now you're just dealing, and, and most of the guys that are particularly violent are usually good guys. If that only bullies are punks and we know bullies are usually cowards. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so That's right. guys that are like, that will try to take advantage of a kid is more than likely a fucking a coward. And I mean, but they're big, they can be tough. They can hurt you. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, and that I, prison system was dangerous in the 80s. Like it was wild, right? You said one God was watching how many people? Yeah, it, it was it was uh, for a small penitentiary. It had a reputation that rivaled the rest of them in the country. We had the highest assault rate on guards. Yeah. Uh, the ambulance was parked outside for a, for a longest time because there were so many incidences. They didn't waste time running back and forth. That's the truth. You'll hear that story from a lot of people. Uh, I heard the ambulances were there 24-7. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was popped out yeah. for a while during the mid '80s. Uh, you know, basically you had to speak with a weapon, and then that chills out. Uh, that prevents a lot of guys from trying to step forward and come at you. And what? but we looked out for each other too. I ran with a crew of guys. We didn't have gangs back then. We had what you call a crew, and uh, we were all yeah. kind of young little guys too. But we uh, we were capable, and uh, we had each other's back. So. You know, I what year did it start changing? Like, what year did the uh, prison where you were well, saying, like a convict? Uh, I a did a bit. Uh, I don't want to take up the whole fucking night explaining it, but in 1990, uh, there was 
they brought in what you would call a troubleshooter, a guy from another, from, he actually went to Walpole first and changed that. They brought him down here. And the first thing he did was he started taking, cause we had street clothes, guys were wearing jewelry. I was wearing gold chains, wearing fuck yeah, I was dressed up in flats. He took all of it and by, I was actually out when it happened, but when he started taking all these items, he created, and they started a new, what really triggered it, the riot, it was a riot. What he triggered it is, if you had a, what they were, uh, a dirty urine, they now started taking your visits, suspending your visits for a, a, a period of time. And the first time they did it, a guy came out and said, hey, guess what they just did to me? And that was it. They did what? And guys just kind of went nuts in the yard. You're the talking about, I don't mean to cut you off, but you're talking about the big riot in the 80s. I heard about this. My uncle told well, me about yep. that. It was actually 1990 or 91. Oh, all right. Wrong one. I say riot, but, you know, very few people even really hurt, but they tore the prison up because it was really against the system. But, yeah, that's yeah. the one. You're probably talking, we're, 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 you are referring to the one I'm speaking of. And it's actually helicopter footage of the guys chasing the guards out of the yard until the state police got there. But anyway, what he did was the guy was a masterpiece uh, stroke by the guy. He locked the prison down because of the riot. They tore down all the buildings and they, and they uh, sent down anyone with influence all over the country. They sent guys to federal prisons, state prisons, and they sent a bunch of guys to high security. And then uh, oh. they started bringing a weak element, guys with molestation charges, guys with rape charges informants and there was nobody really no convicts really there there was a few scattered but and for the next few years there there was like these little fires that would flare up uh guys would have you know would go at it with the seals but they basically took it back they used they utilized the riot to take back the prison and it's never been the same uh this still acts of violence it's not like it was the old days were over and that's how they did it through that riot uh they created the riot on purpose to utilize it to their advantage it was uh the guy he pulled it off and he won a national award for it by the way wow for turning around one of the most violent prisons in the country because it's so small and like they utilize the high security that's those are like segregated blocks so you can have an issue in one block and the convicts in another block don't even know so the the, the whole incident doesn't escalate you follow me yeah. uh, I mean, psychology behind uh, the way because I even the funny thing is that my first time in high security I was 18 first they lied to me they told me the guy that I assaulted died they wanted me to rat on the case but I just uh, so all day I thought I had a body on my hands and then I found out the guy didn't die but uh, this guy gave me a book uh, on behavior modification and it was uh, how penologists got together with psychologists and uh psychiatrists and all kind of various people and they, they started building the high security system that you hear about now and uh i was actually going through the same stuff i was reading in the book that they, they call it uh well behavior modification tactics basically controlling everything even the light to your cigarette or controlling the light in your cell it was all meant yeah. to break you and it broke a lot of guys and uh i watched a lot of guys lose their mind i do a video on that uh yeah the free they kept you cold and then you have other guys. I had a guy, uh, he'll bang on your wall with his uh, deodorant for three weeks straight. Wow. He, he only gets up just to do that and eat his meal. He doesn't even come out of his cell. You got a guy bang on your wall like that for three weeks, tap, 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 tap. I mean, that's the type of shit I was enduring as a kid. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that's just one of many things. But to tell you, uh, I kind of, I tend to slip off the track when I go into one story because it always leads into another. So forgive me. No, it's ex it, it, it's go good. Ahead. It's, just, it's uh, good. You're, I just you're want a to good speaker. A question. Yeah, you are a very good speaker. I just want to ask you something. Did so? Did you do all your time in the same prison? Yeah, I spent all that time in uh, in in the uh, in the ACI. Yeah, when they shipped those guys out during the riot, I happened to be on the street at the time, so you could say I missed that bus, and then. Uh, when I came back, I couldn't, when I, when I came back, when I went back to prison, I was having a hard time adjusting to the new prison. And we were, they were supposed to send a bunch of us out of state, but something happened and chose a bunch of guys out of Massachusetts instead, because they were dealing with the same issue. And then eventually I just started making a change for the better because I knew I was going to spend my life in the hole. And, uh, the reason why is because you had federal crimes. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, well, because, uh, well, most of my crimes were state, they were all, uh, state crimes, even though I got arrested by the feds with the state. That's another reason why I spent a lot of guys go to the feds because they, as you guys are familiar with, the, you commit a federal crime, you go to federal prison. 
But uh, so I spent all my time in that little rinky-dink prison, and which is even worse. A lot of us wanted to be shipped out, but they can, uh-huh. they, they'll do you dirty and send you down south or something like that, and you you might not appreciate that. <laughs> How many years did you do with uh, Rudy? But Rudy, I did it the, his whole last bit, I guess you could say, from uh, like you said, the early eighties to what ninety one. I did all 91. that. Ninety one. Yeah. Well, I was released for six months in uh, in eighty eight. I did five years from sixteen to twenty one. I was charged with another crime, but at the time, I was in touch with Rudy the whole time I was on the street in the eighties. Rudy, like I was uh, friends with him at the time, so you know I was always in touch with him at the time. And I went back. And I did another couple of years. Then uh, I got out and I went right back. I was I was like, uh, I'd hit the street. I hit the bricks running, you know. I was just, uh, I did another 10 years for a bank robbery uh, from, nine, uh, yeah, from 93 to 2003 or 92 to 2002. I was only out uh, less than a year after that. You could, I was the epitome of a criminal sociopath. And uh, I didn't like that. I, the first time I came across that word sociopath and I started reading about it, and I knew that shit applied to me. I was like, <laughs> and all bets are against me. Even now you got gods up there. There's no way this guy can make it. I'm fueled by that stuff. You know, uh, it, I'm a guy against all odds who's, who's making it. You know, it, it, most guys that do that kind of time, as you guys probably know, unless you've got a, a, a lump sum of money that you've had before you went to prison or you've got a, a large family or family or friends that done well, because most of my issues was, was financial. And, uh, you know, you get out of there broke after many years. You need a lot of help. Yeah. It doesn't come quick enough. I used to go take it. And uh, I know that's no excuse. I'm not trying to justify it or any of that stuff. That was my mentality. This time I just I learned patience and I met a good woman who tolerated my uh, adjustment, which was hard. And uh I stuck it out. Well, plus I made up my mind. I wanted to change. I never wanted to change. It ain't like I tried to change in the past. I'm not. I'm not even gonna sit here and tell you I'm some nice guy now. I didn't change. I didn't do. I didn't find God. I didn't do it through medication. I just common sense told me: Do you want to die in prison, or do you want to try to make a change? And uh, with the help of my wife, and uh, basically, and some family members who uh, stood by me, I've been able to. Uh, he got a living and make it, you know, and uh, I've been out long enough now where I feel well adjusted and uh, there's no looking back now, you know. Good. God uh, bless. You. It's good for you. God bless. You know what I want to ask you? How's uh, Chris doing? Have you Chris, heard from her anything? Uh, Chris has only been out a few months himself. He's going through it himself now. Uh, oh, he's out? Resources, but uh, he's, he's, he's giving it. He's trying his best, man. And I'm hoping. Oh, he got home. He's home right now? He's home? Oh, yeah. Chris oh, wow. That. Please tell him I said hello. You got it. I, uh, we don't see each other that much because my parole don't allow us to speak. To yeah. Him. So, is know, he a little roadie? Is he still around here? Yeah, he lives uh, just over the mass line, but he comes around and uh, you know, my I, sometimes through family I'll get a message or something. You know, I, I basically don't go around anybody anymore. I'm too. Uh, You're I'm, smart. Gotta be, you know, it's just a new world. You don't know who you can trust anymore. It's a mess. I surround myself with people like you guys who are doing good shit. You know, uh, it's it's so easy to to make to slip and fall, or be even for the law enforcement to see a couple of guys together and call it something. Yep. That's not, you know what I mean? Yep. And Wrong. so yep. I just said the hell with all of it. I, I'm home. I'm a homebody now. I go to work when I am working, and I spend my time with my family or around guys like you guys that are doing something with yourself. You know. And uh, just so keep at the right. Listen, keep at that writing, and the uh, the YouTube your channel will blow up definitely. You got some interesting stories, and uh, the chat loves you over here. There's a bunch of people so, uh, giving you compliments and stuff like that. Yeah, we're I'm, happy for you. Yeah. We're happy for you, man. It's inspired the hell out of me these last couple of hours. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Uh, I, I stream all the time. We're always push the channel, and there's other channels too that are buddies of mine that will definitely share your stuff and everything without a doubt. Oh, very good. And anytime you want to come on, Angel always has people on. Anytime you want to come on, you come on, and uh, we'll push your book too. Well, yeah, exactly. Just anytime, I'll drop the link and say, "Come on." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, Indeed. This is really Indeed. so interesting to me. It's so interesting. <laughs> Dean, were you around uh, the guy that had the goat? Oh, yeah. I know him well. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> I spoke to him. I, 
Oh, he's 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 getting up there in age, man. Uh, Is he doing all right though? He's healthy. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, he had a, a pig's valve put in not too long ago. He's, yeah, uh, yeah, I heard. Guys like him, they don't lay down easy, you know. He's a he's no, a he's he's <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> In my autobiography and uh, i asked a handful of guys permission to put the put them in there he's one of them and the, like jerry who just passed away i you know yeah. and uh they all gave me permission to mention their name not in incriminating <laughs> way but just to show the mentality i was growing up around because those guys are very unique you know they shaped yeah. me in a way so uh, yeah they all had really good stories oh yeah well those guys are a little older than me so they they're they have a little more than what I have to offer in that regards, but I guess mine's unique in its own way because, you know, I was so young around those guys, you know? Hey, yeah, sometimes just being story. the fly on the wall. Yeah. It's unique. Listen, 16, 17, going into that gladiator camp. Like, Rudolph used to tell me how wild that was in the 80s, and other people would tell me. That's a, that's just nuts. That's amazing. At 15 years old in the intake center, looking out the segregation when the at the at the state police lining the wall every other week because of a riot. I was knew I was on my way over there. I was in my cell as a kid with a, a makeshift knife, uh, without any real skill, but trying to practice how to use it. That's the mindset I was in at sixteen. Like kid, this is where you're going. You better get ready. <laughs> it was a gladiator uh, school. It, it really was. Angel, I have a question for you. My wife was reminding me. How would I know when you're on live? There's a particular way I, I would should know. Yeah, you, you just subscribe to my channel. And, uh, and hit and the hit, bell notification. And hit the bell, all the notifications. It'll say all. And then you'll, you'll, you should get the notification whenever I go live. And anytime you want to come on, just say, hey, it's me, Dean. Drop the link. Wow. And that goes for you, too. It's the same thing with you, Nick, right? Yeah, yeah. Anytime. Listen, anytime uh, you subscribe, hit the subscribe, the bell. Anytime. I gave your wife the wrench, so you, you're a mod in there. You come in, drop your channel link or your book, or if you want to, it's up, anything. Anything you need, brother. Oh, so all you guys. Yeah, we're going to get some book sales up for you. Yeah. I'm going to buy a book. There's, there's going to be a bunch of people in this chat that are going to buy yeah, books I'm for you. Yeah, I'm going to get one right now. What is the name of it again? Uh, Dark Impression. Okay. I'll buy one we'll this week too. All. Yeah, I'm gonna buy one this week too. And I've uh, I uh, I've also uh, promoted uh, uh, Gerard Wilmette's book on here because I'm friends with his nephew. Yeah, uh, gonna... about a couple of months ago. What price Providence? So we'll push yours too, and oh. uh, I'll buy it too. Like I bought uh, what price Providence? Well, hopefully, I can sign them for you guys somehow, some way. All right. Yeah, we'll get I... together. You're in the area. Okay. You don't gotta worry about us. We don't have any Fed charges or nothing. We're good to go. <laughs> Yeah, we are with no felonies here. <laughs> yes, yes, you can hang with us. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys will be hearing from me. All right. Good, yeah, without good. A doubt. I can't wait to hear. All right, Scotty will give you my number. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, and if it wasn't for Scotty, like I said, if it wasn't for Scotty, I wouldn't have known about that. Yeah, I'll be sure to thank him for it. All right. Dean, All right. Dean, have a good thank one. You. Dean, I just wanted to ask you one more question. So, <laughs> the, 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 the kid, the when you. <laughs> when you were 16 and you were that kid on the streets, are you still friends with all those people that you were friends with at 16? No. Um, all my friendships uh, I generated uh, incarcerated. I know a couple of guys, but because I really didn't have friends. I was an escapee uh, from 13 to 16. When I wasn't in the training school, I was an escapee. So I lived like I wanted to be an outlaw. I drove only stolen cars. I sniffed coke, carried a gun. I was a t punk teenager. And so I didn't really have friends. I, all my friends were older guys. And most of them are kind of dead. At the, to go, my, but the real friendships I developed in prison, because you're like comrade in arms in there, you know? I went to yeah. war with guys in there. Those are the guys. And even then, I don't really claim a lot of friends. I can claim a few guys, because I've been betrayed by most of those guys over the years. So. I guess the answer to that question is no. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to know. And, and nah, a lot of guys over the years uh, either went bad, some died. Uh, the closest person I probably had to me through all of that turmoil would have been Rudolph. Oh, yeah. wow. That's the truth. And my friend Chris, but I haven't heard from him. I seen you mention that name earlier, really, which is why I brought it up. Yeah, he's uh, a good guy. He's doing very yeah. well, I heard. Yeah, he was a good, good man. He was just a young kid himself, and he, he taught me what it is to be a convict, the difference between a convict and an inmate, which I explained one time. 
you know, not that I go around wearing that as some badge of honor, but because I write about it. I'm, and I'm working on autobiography, so there's a lot of stuff in there that's really not in the video that I, I like to share uh, at some point. I know? think you should work on that because that's really, really interesting. Well, I actually already have it written. I only have, I'm on my third draft, so I already really? wrote that. It's all handwritten. <laughs> Yeah, how I know about that is through like uh, through Rudolph and stuff, and uh, Scotty and all the guys and stuff like that. And I, yeah. I, I, I met him when he first got out and stuff. He was a nice guy. Oh yeah, he was cool with his niece. That's why too. Oh, I see. Dean, you got to look where you could be involved with acting and everything. I've been told that a couple of times. That's it's uh, it's, it's not voice. that. I almost it's not that far of a reach. It really isn't. So if you ever need any insight or help with that, we might be able to help you also. Hey, listen, I, uh, that sounds like something I would. I'm going to tell you the thing about guys that serve a lot of time. Uh, they probably can do a little acting because, you know, you, in prison, you are, in a sense, acting in a way. Even though you mm. are uh, you're being yourself, there's a lot of acting that goes on in there because you got to. Yeah, while you're moving, I was like one of the more notorious heroin traffickers in there for the longest time. But I had to put on the face of a guy that was uh, not. Even as I was changing, I still was involved and engaged in a lot of negative shit. It took me a long time because uh, I didn't have, I didn't have, uh, once Rudolph passed away, a lot of the income that I got from him and the saint kind of dwindled. And so, not to make an excuse as to why, but that's... I gave myself that was my excuse to go into the heroin trade again. And uh, boy, did that bring a lot of trouble. But I only bring that up to say there's a lot of acting involved with uh, serving time. <laughs> so yeah. I think it guy almost develops a, sk a skill in that area, I think. <laughs> if that makes sense to you guys. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. The scene was a funny character, too. Yeah, oh, he was good to <laughs> Boy, did he put a lot of heat on me, though. Jeez, he was just reckless in his own way. <laughs> But he, yeah. uh, he took his kid's a good guy. Yeah, he took care of me for a long time. I didn't. I never went without with that guy. Now, when your brother came home uh, in '99, he was living with him. I used to, he used to live with him at that time. Yeah, I remember. My sister yeah. used to clean the house over there. My brother Lauren lived there too for a little while. Yeah, That's where were... I met your brother. Was at the Saints' house. Yeah, yeah. They offered me a chance yeah. to live there, but I didn't. I knew better because uh, I don't want to be coming out and being greeted by the feds every day up the street. <laughs> No, yeah, it was. They were well, they well, that place was wide up. I remember going there and like getting them food and stuff. The whole house was. Oh my god! But right around, except there, for the one, just his area. Yeah, his area was gross. He was a fucking <laughs> nut. <laughs> he used to pull the colostomy bag out of his thing. Well, uh, we have to go too far with that. <laughs> Drop a Viking, and you want a Viking in? <laughs> I said, no, say I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. He, he was he was funny. His <laughs> son, I'm I'm real close with his son. He's a good man. Yeah, I met him once or twice. I got to speak to him a couple of times. Yeah, he's good a man. Oh. Yeah, a total gentleman. Dean, uh, I, I I just ordered your book. Wow, well, thank you. I just ordered your book. It'll be here Saturday. And I know I said this earlier, but what I want to just to remind you is that book I'm revising because I wrote that. Uh, I was just learning how to write. So it, it, some people found some things confusing. I don't think you guys would find it confusing because you're familiar with the life. So you'll be able to read where some people who aren't familiar with that yeah. speak would probably be confused. But I have to revise it, and I give the characters more depthness now. Uh, so what I'll do is when I revise it and I'm done, I'll send you guys a free copy of the revised edition. How's that? Nah, we want to pay for it, buddy. <laughs> we want to support, we support our friends. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll actually assign it, though. You got it. I will do that. Yes. A real friend don't want anything for free. A real friend wants to help out their friends. Well put. Well put. I told a guy something like that recently. <laughs> that's the way I was That's the way I was brought up. Yeah. Well, like and us been from Providence, you got to look out for each other. That's why I'm glad Scotty let me know because I wouldn't have known about this. Huh. Well, I'll be sure to be communicating with you guys in the near future. I can... I can feel that. I can just see it now because uh, you guys are easy to talk to and I can appreciate you guys, all right? Yeah, no doubt about it. God bless you. And God bless you. And Thank God bless you, you so your much. Hey, and no questions are off, uh, off limits to me. You can ask me anything you want to ask me. I'm not uh, shy. I talk about it all. You know, obviously, I'm not going to reveal anything on anybody, of course. Yeah. 
You guys ain't going to ask anything that would do that anyway. No, no, no. no. All right. Dean, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you. You are such a such a great man. I can hey. tell. You're a sweetheart. You're a sweetheart. You're a good man. Yeah, I'm so guy. impressed. Like, look. Well, I really appreciate those words, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yes, anytime. Yeah, right. anytime, Dean. Thank you so much. Right. And say goodnight to your wife. You didn't tell me her name. Her name is Carol. She wasn't, they don't want to come on here right now. She wasn't prepared. So she That's said, That's okay. She said goodnight, guys. Goodnight, uh, goodnight Carol. Goodnight, Carol. Good night, Dean, and thank uh, you. All right, now I got to figure out how to shut this damn thing. I gotcha. I <laughs> keep everybody. He's going to shut it up. Bye. I'm going to kick the you. Boat. Bye. <laughs> Give him the boot. I gave it a boot. Uh, that's well, boot. I, really, I could have listened to him all for like four more hours. I really could have. Oh yeah, yeah. I like, I like his demeanor. Yes. Like stories. Well, he reminds me so much of his brother. I keep calling him Chris because I uh, know, doesn't he? Oh my god, a spit. Yeah, same exact. Oh wow. <laughs> The same, the same way they talk, the same mannerisms, and they look a lot alike, too. I'm glad Chris is out, too. I'm going to have to reach out to him. He was a nice guy. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Real, I didn't even know he was home. Wow, God bless him. Happy for him. Yeah. See, and everybody in the chat is saying the same thing. Great guest. Very interesting. It's yeah, so no, nice. Yeah, just dropped his channel again. If nobody has subbed, Cremel just dropped the channel right there. Please give it a sub. And if you're into books... Yeah. Uh, Buy his book and stuff. Yeah. I and just, if you're not I just, into books and you just want to support somebody that's a good person trying to change their life in a better way, buy his book. Exactly. Amen. Hit the like yeah. button, everybody. Please, please hit the like button. I like um, the story he told about the old man. Uh, uh, yeah. That was funny. The vo when he did the voice. Yeah. <laughs> just how he was, too, looking out for people, had a big heart. Uh -huh. Like there's so much more to these people. Like all these people want to paint him as uh just criminal stuff. They, there's so much nah. more to these men than that. There's Fox. a lot of layers. A lot of layers to these men. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not, High American maid. And we're I'm not sorry. Glorifying, we're not glorifying organized crime, and, uh, and I'm no. just I'm just saying how much uh care about. Family. You're talking about the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. You the see, good stuff about these men. You see, that's the thing is that you know. There's some people that is, that idolize them. They don't even know them, but they, yet they idolize them. Then yep. there's some people who totally trash them. They don't know mm -hmm. them, but they do that. Yeah. But the, the some of these men are really good men. I don't care what any of these people say, because some of them really are good men. Yep. Back then, it was an honor to be. 100%. It's an honor to be. They love awesome. animals, uh, help people. Damien's dad helped people. Uh, the old man helped. They all helped so many people. Uh, like I said, uh, school time, people would be lined up at the door, uh, Christmas time. And he looked out for his friends, too. Like, Rudolph used to look out for all of his buddies that were still in the can. Like he was saying, when Rudolph was alive, he would look out for him. He looked out for all of his buddies and his guys that even though he was out of jail for years, he still looked out for everybody. He had a huge heart, a tremendous heart. Like I, he was like my second dad. I loved him. It was it was what a wonderful. He give you the shirt right off his back, the last dollar in his pocket. And children loved him. I remember one time my friend came over with his baby. The baby wouldn't stop crying. Right into his arms, baby stopped crying. <laughs> Little kids gravitated towards him like you wouldn't believe. Wow. It, it, it was amazing. It really was. Just to be in the present. Some of these men just had certain auras that were just so powerful that you just wanted to be in their presence, not for any other monetary gain, just to listen to them and and, uh, and obtain the advice that they would give you, like positive advice, not go do this, go do no, it was it was do the right thing. Don't yeah. you know learn from my mistakes. Yeah, never it, once it, did those guys tell us to do anything criminal, anything no. that could get us in trouble. Never. Was that, yeah, that was the last better. thing they wanted. The last thing they wanted was for us to get into trouble. Exactly. 
See, and that and and oh, Maureen, and, Maureen Fink just said ordering the book now. Thank you, Maureen. That means thank a lot. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I just ordered it. It's coming here Saturday. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna order it as soon as I get off. And, and Tommy uh, Six said he's gonna promote on the channel. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate. Thank it. you, everybody. Yeah, see, like I love that. Like, um, he changed his life around. He's got a baby now. He's got a wife. He's yep. working. He's Good trying. Morning. You know. If the a career of being, I mean, a whole life of being in, you know, in prison, and now he's turning his whole life around. You see how upbeat yeah. he is. I love that. I yeah, love he's, that. he's a tough guy mentally because uh, imagine being thrown in there at 16 years old into the ACI yeah. in the 1980s. That's insane, and spending your whole and then getting out and turning your life around like that with a beautiful baby, a beautiful wife, a family and what you know and and with the right head on his shoulders too. God bless him. That I love hearing stories about that. I know. I'm so I'm so happy that that he came on. Really. I really am so happy. And thank well, you before I joined, before I joined uh, here I left a comment on his channel saying uh I'm going on Angel Gotti's podcast. Look it up because I was hoping that this would happen, that they would get the message and uh, pop on. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad. Hi, Tony Ubats. Now, does Tony know him? Tony uh, Ubats said something in his uh, last post. Tony's been at my house every man. day around my father. Every and Tony said it best. He would never stray us in that bad way. If anything, he would explain, you have to be good. Because you already get two strikes against you. You have to be good. There is no don't do this. Go to work. Go go to school. Go become something better than we could ever even dream. And he would and help that was, these kids get jobs. Like he loved Tony. Tony and him were so close. Uh he would help yeah. these guys get jobs. He was good like that. He would never send nobody out to do tr uh criminal stuff. Never. I never heard a bad thing said about my father. No. Which is I'm never, I've, I've never heard a bad thing ever said about never. my father, ever. No, Even the people that were on the opposite side of him said right out. There was an attorney general that after my father passed away, she was a nun. Her name was Arlene Violet. She, she, she was, good. yep. Yeah, she sentenced my father. Yeah. And, uh, and when my father passed away, she had her own like podcast coming up and everything like that. Radio thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like her own radio show. And and she said the day my father passed away, how he was the most gentleman that she's ever the, the biggest gentleman she's ever met in her life. So polite, so, so eloquent, the way he spoke, never gave up anything, but respected her, you know, told her, I know you have a job to do, but you have to do it, you know, correctly. That's, you know, and and she did. She sent him away for uh uh, three and a half years in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, federal prison. But she she did say he was such a polite gentleman, one of the one of the best gentlemen she's ever met in her life. And that's a that's an attorney general that Dang said that. Judge. Yeah, that's huge. Well, look who he was schooled by. Also, he was schooled by the old man. Yeah, he was a gentleman. Your dad, good man. Class, yeah, I, remember class, he, I remember when he class, passed class. away. My uncle Kamino came out and told me he's like. Rocco just passed. I was just like, oh man, it was uh, uh, unreal. Oh, I didn't even know how to deal with it after that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was, well, I was, you know, I was just in a weird you. place. He's looking down on you and he's proud of you. And we always go visit his grave and mama's yep. and all of them. Every Saturday. Every Saturday, yeah. Every Saturday, I'm at St. Anne's. They passed. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. Um, 20 years, 20 years I go every Saturday. I spent wow. 20 years already. Wow, that feels like just yesterday in some ways. Why well, no? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Just, Justice Tech Pro said, Hey, all in chat, I'm not ignoring anyone. Just hard to interact now. Hope everyone is doing well. Good to see you, all the good people in the chat. Thank Great you. Great episode. Um, Dominic is the best. Yes, Dominic is the best. And Dominic, I did not know you dropped one. I am well, you dropped an episode. And uh I'm gonna it's watch good. it right after this is over because you know how I look forward to your podcasts. 
Yeah, it, it was really good. I, I'm third three ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. There. It was good. But I, I love this podcast. The, I actually got to take the dog out and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm going to uh, take off. Uh, Boot him, Angel. Boot him. Yeah, MRE, thank you so much. Are you going to shut this down and do another one or uh, something like that? Uh, you, because I wanted people to see it at least. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to shut this down. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, no, give me the boot, Angel. Uh, give me the we, boot. Hold I, on. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Whoops. There you go. You got the boot. Okay. Let me just put some comments up and then I will. Uh... I really loved that. I really loved it. I never expected to. Uh... That was a beautiful baby, right? That was a beautiful baby. I never expected to go in this direction tonight, but I'm so happy that we did. And Tony Ubachi, you know it. They both got the boot. All three of them got the boot. Oh, Farmhouse, thank you. She's ordering the book now as well. Uh, let's see. I have six beers and one Chris Trock wig left. Nice. Nice, Mr. Smith. Uh, I really like that guy. Super cool dude. Me too. Me too. I definitely want him to come back. Oh, good. He has 171 now. This is so great because this morning when I first saw him and I subbed, he had 67 and now he has 171. Thank you so much, everybody. That's so nice of everyone. Uh, oh, good. And please hit that like button. And Martin Krugman says, just subbed an ordered book. Thank you. Uh, yeah, exactly. I did. I saw that. The, like the chat almost stopped because everybody was listening to him. It was great. He was great. We have to have him back. And he could be an actor, by the way. Thank you for bringing him to us. I will promote him on my morning show. God bless. Thank you, Tommy Stiggs. Thank you so much. And thank you, Maureen. And let's... Hi, NB. How are you? Uh, Good night, Frankie Calabria. Yeah. Exactly, Cremel. He was... I mean, he is. He's inspirational. Exactly. Uh, Dean brings up a good point about the system trying to keep people in trouble. Yes, they do. Uh, Just bought Dean's book. Thank you very much, Aegon. I'm thanking you from him. (laughs) And Farmhouse says, please hit that like button. Let's see. Uh, Sassanino says, best friend, go to your channel and copy your link, then come back. Oh, that's how to share her, uh, how to drop your own link. Maureen, thank you for ordering the book. Tommy Stiggs, many of them are good men. Unfortunately, many don't see the opposite side of what they are classified as bad guys. Many don't see that. Exactly. He wasn't a child from a middle-class functional family who walked out the door to do cool things, said exactly. Uh, And that was for Damien's dad, yeah. (sighs) Okay, let me see. See, me too, says Nino. I love how we stick together. The We Push Back community is the greatest, all awesome people. I agree. I agree. Hi, Chew Suck. I hit the bell and it didn't ring. I hit it harder and cracked my screen. 
Nice, I guess. Let's see. Okay. JTP. Hello, Edwin. How are you, Edwin? Thank you, Edwin. Okay. I'm so behind in the comments. I'm trying to get to some of them before we shut this down. Good night, Tommy Stiggs. Good night, Michael Argenti. And yes, we push back. Uh, Damien says, I'm going to take Dean out to dinner when he finds time. He seems like a man of character. Exactly. Yes, he does seem like that. Just give me one second. Uh, my daughter's asking me if I cooked. Uh, the system is designed to keep you down. I did eight years and finally beat the system, but it took being a single father to to a newborn to do it. Lately, that's all I hear is like that. Um, that men who uh who have uh, like new children, newborns, you know, um, had a child. Uh, turn their whole lives around the child. And that's so good. If your child, if your newborn baby is the reason why you're uh, on the up and up, that's great. Hi, Jerry Gambuti. Okay. Good night, Gianni. Okay. I am all caught up in the comments. That's a shocker. Uh, Sean, Sharon, Damien was dead on Dean, could definitely do some acting, I believe. I feel the same way. I don't know if he, maybe he was sitting too far away, but to me, he kind of reminded me of a young Frankie Valley or, or um, what's the other guy's name? Frankie Avalon. He reminded me of that, of, uh, you know, them. Good night, Michael Argenti. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Damien said, thank you, best friend. Yes. Okay, everybody. I'm going now. Everybody, thank you so much. Dean, please come back. Please. <laughs> it was great having you on. And uh, thank you, M. Murray and Damien. Thank you, Dominic, J JTP. Thank you so much. And, and you're just getting here and I'm going off. It's okay. Okay. Everybody have a great night. Thank you so much. Everybody hit the like button on the way out, please. And thank you and good night.